right, folks. Here we are. We might be drunk. We got a we got a hot guest. He's on his way in from across the pond. I don't want to give all anything over, away. All over the states too. He's uh, he's hanging. Oh, he's international. You look at those days. We think we're cool. It's like, hey, Australia, Cleveland. This guy is Munich, <laughs> North Pole, Wuhan. Hamas, you name it. That's not a place. <laughs> not a place. That was say. That's... <laughs> From the sea to the ocean, whatever the hell the term is. <laughs> what is it? From the sea to the cunt? I can't remember. C-section? Who knows? Yeah. <laughs> From the river to the, the river to the... What the hell's going on here? All right. Uh, All right. Meanwhile, we're sitting with the king of New York here. No, no. Oh, no. that's right. Just played MSG coming off. MSG Theater. It was fun. It's a fun night, man. It was, Hell yeah. Went to the... Sold it to, out. Got to see the Knicks locker room, the Rangers locker room. Woo. It had the catering in because Pink was playing the big room. <laughs> so there was like catering in the... You're just like hanging by Jalen Brunson's locker and there's like tuna subs and shit. Nice. <laughs> But uh, yeah, it was crazy, man. It was it was fun, fun night. Marlon Craft, your boy, did a set. He was great. Right. Hell yeah, the musician Marlon Craft, soulful jazz rap. Love oh, it. love that. So New York wears a Walt Clyde Frazier jersey on stage. Then we got uh, you know Joe List and Will Sylvester did sets. Hey, hey, yeah, and then. Uh, Oof, a wild night. Had a crazy ex toss from the. <laughs> <laughs> the Wait one... a minute, you had an ex girlfriend toss from, from like the show? fifteen years ago. I knew it was her heckling. I didn't say she was that. heckling. Yeah, <laughs> C- crazy ex is the key here. Yeah, yeah. What a win, though. Wait, Your one? ex gets to see you at a sold out garden. You do a bit. She not, gets it's tossed. It's not a win because I'm gonna have to get a restraining order. It's not. Oh, it's that crazy. Yeah. It's what you. There are times when you're young where you're like, well, maybe this won't work out, but not to that extent. Man, you don't think like maybe I'll have to show a judge text messages. You're right. You just think maybe I'll have to see other people. Sure. But to hang other judges. <laughs> <laughs> I made out with a girl in front of my ex once. That to me, I thought that was a win though. But this is pretty good. It's not a win. It's so it's a lot. Walk me through getting her removed. I my agent. Every... Well, my agent. No, I I have a joke. I had a long bit about her. I didn't do out of respect because she sent me a million texts. I didn't answer saying I'm coming with my mom. So I'm like, All right, let me not <laughs> let me not do this bit. And then um, I do a, a joke that's not even about her. Obviously, but I say, well, I guess she could assume it's about her but it's not i say you know i've never dated a woman with a good father that's the setup and she goes hey oh my god hey so i knew it was her yeah. hey i'm like Ugh, that so i kind of diffuse it pretty quickly i mean like am i getting heckled by a fucking manatee me <laughs> and uh and i'm just trashing her and whatever and <laughs> berkowitz my agent who's you know he's a shark he runs out there and goes, shut the fuck up. Wow. And they're like, oh. they're like, you know, blown away. And he goes, if you don't sh- if you don't leave right now, you will be arrested. And she goes, who are you? And he goes, Paul. He made up a backstory <laughs> as a security guard. <laughs> and uh, he goes, my name is Paul. And then I guess he nodded to another security security guard, my lawyer, just two medium-sized Jews. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> MSG security threw me out a long message, whatever. And... Uh, do you have a code? You know, get uh, get I this don't, bitch a drink or I, whatever. I, no, that's I think DeRosa's code. Yeah, I think that's the standard. Get this person a drink. No, and also I didn't even do it. I was just annoyed because I was like, ugh, this is just like I just let me just get to this bit. Yeah. So I just usually I'll entertain a heckler and I'll fucking slam him. But I was like, I know who this is. They're not right in the head. This mm. is gonna go badly. So what's the mom doing? Is the mom going? Shh. I think apologizing. Okay, for her, at but, least the mom's yeah, saying. Yeah, I mean. Yeah, it was it was nutty, but yeah, the, the night as a whole was was killer. You know, the cellar staff was there: Asti, Gnome, Val, wow. Liz, everyone. Uh, yeah, wild night, really Hell fun. Yeah. I uh, I puked. Nice. <laughs> I think it's. I didn't drink that much. I think it's a combo of the booze and the stress levels. Sure. But uh, yeah, I was. I was down for the count. It was it was multiple middle of the night wake up pukes, which that's always Ooh, unpleasant. Damn, I haven't had one of those in years. It was rough. Yeah, it wasn't good. So now you got no sleep and you're yakking. Not good. Yeah, rough rough Sunday. But what are you gonna do? I'm having nachos. What? Yes, huh? for pride. I'm so oh. proud. Oh. I feel so good. You played thought, the fucking thought this garden. Left my body that night. <laughs> Jesus Christ! Yeah. What the hell? You using? Get, I hope uh, a <laughs> yeah. paraglider comes in and shoots you. <laughs> Jesus Christ! 
<laughs> what the hell was that? <laughs> anyway, I'm really, I'm really oh, open about you. Yeah. Thank you. Yes. That was a fun night. It was cool. It's like cool to see your parents happy. Brother and sister didn't come. Did a joke about that. Oh, my, really? Because they were running the marathon the next day. So I said, my dad writes an email. All three of you have a big weekend. I go, fuck you. It's my weekend. <laughs> Come on. Hey. Hey, Jimbo. Jimmy, join us. I believe your luck. How are you? How are you, man? Hey. Good to see you. Well, How are you? Hey, good to see you, man. Good. Looking sharp. Um, yeah, well, That's you. Know, you. I mean, you come on, we might be drunk. You, you can't <laughs> dress up. This is huge. Oh, yeah. This is my big break. You've good been, to have you. have doing the pod run lately, I see. Uh, yeah, I did a couple. I mean, they're very fun. Yeah. It's like, sure. It's a, really, it's a really kind of interesting thing now where people go, I'd rather do this than you know, do the Tonight Show. No one calls. No. Right. This is on, winning. I don't know. Joe Rogan or Modern Wisdom or, or whatever and they're like people go oh yeah that's good oh yeah. yeah this is way better it's more authentic you know we're not just gonna fake laugh and uh, you don't have to sit next Sorry, to you're a... not gonna fake laugh no, well, we'll, we'll give you a well, few well I'll go <laughs> we'll get there the ball. There you go. <laughs> All right, you got one. The, uh, yeah, no, it's very nice to see you, boys. Uh, you too, man. It's weird that thing of like the job that we do as well. It's like um, I was sort of like stand-up comedy is kind of self-assignment. Mm. Right? You kind of do it yourself. Sure. And you've got all the control. And then there's that weird thing that happens when you start working with producers. If you, you know, where you go, I don't know, I'm waiting around for someone to give me permission. Yes. And then you sort of do the podcast thing just seems to fit with what comics are. You go, no, I'll just do it myself. I don't That's have a point. boss. No one's, I remember Bill Burr, when I think when Louis got cancelled, Bill Burr sort of saying, well, I've got to cancel me. What are they going to do? Take away my garage. <laughs> <laughs> my, my podcast in my garage. Yeah. yeah. Good it, luck, fellas. It makes sense. I mean, I had just had the agent meeting of like, what's next? What are you working on? What's your passion? And I'm like, oh, I'm doing it. Yeah. I know that's a bummer, but this is no, stand up. I, I think it like fits into that whole thing of like, I'm I'm getting quite stoic in my old age. I'm trying to do less better. Mm. Like just be a stand up. I've been doing that for years. But that thing of like, when you're trying to write a sitcom, you're on the road and you're trying to write some, or a movie or something in the background, you go oh, this is taking all of that mental energy. Right. And the only thing that's ever grown corn for me is writing jokes. That's how I feel. But, but that's, we, we've talked about this a lot is, you oh, know. Oh, well, I'll, I'll, sorry. No, no, no. Sorry, I, no, if it's no, boring, I'll, no, I'll stop. <laughs> Fuck, you know, this guy. I agree with what you're saying, but also like I do, I grew up loving movies. I do want to do that as well. We're working on a movie. We're working on a movie right now. We're yeah. trying to oh, write one. I don't think I'm not. I've got one, I think in pre-production, but I mean, ah. <laughs> but, but the side hustle, the amount of energy that it's that a takes. Lot. And these like, meetings and, and the, uh, they can meet next month. And, uh, ooh, they got to meet in two months. And, and so now we're waiting two months before we can even get anywhere. The whole business has been on strike. It doesn't feel that different. Not for a comic. It doesn't, for, for like movies and stuff. The, the, but that, that thing as well with it, I think I sort of view those as lottery tickets, right? So you, sure. you're a stand-up, that's your job. Sure. And then the, the, like, the little side hustle thing of like, you go, yeah, but I'll, I'll throw something in the ring. But you're, it's not taking a huge amount of, you realize this is your main job. Yes. That's like a little hobby. The movie business, for, it's not really our thing. What's the movie about? What are you writing a movie about? Uh, we, we, we want to keep it on the DL for now because it's, it's, it's a long process here. But uh, Two girls, one cup, two. Yeah. yeah. Right. Uh -huh. Four girls, eight yeah. cups. <laughs> yeah. Insane. It's a lot of feces. Um, the, uh, the, how is that PG, a reference? PG, though. We, we keep it clean. How is that a reference <laughs> yeah. to PG that everyone movie. gets? Well, it's a I very mean, like popular film. Yeah, sure. I don't know if everyone gets it. I, think like, oh, I don't think my yeah. mom would get it, but I think she would just be like, oh, that's funny. I would like, you know, I don't yeah. think everyone gets well, it. Well, that's how you right. test if it's a good mom. If she knows <laughs> that movie, you're like, oh, she's fucked the mailman or whatever. Yeah, I mean, if your mom was in that movie, that's someone's Woo! mom. That's someone. That's someone's mom. That ah. feels like. Well, one died. One, one of the died. gals. This guy's a fan. Oh, I yeah. Mean, I know the whole. You know what's as well. It's crazy this, she this, died. This she was making. To by a lot of people. You realize someone has just had to Google two girls, one cup and, what, and gone, oh, no. Oh, they've Googled it. <laughs> it. It's one of those ones where it fills in when you I write could, half of I it. I could never watch it, though. I could never sit through it. Pull it up. <laughs> no, don't put it up. <laughs> I'm no. joking. I'm joking. It's a, it's a terrible. After Wikipedia. But one died. Oh, hang on. It was How already in your search history. <laughs> she, see? <laughs> see? How did she die? Shame, presumably. <laughs> presumably, shame is actually. Her diet? I don't know. No, it's actually. She had a shitty diet. There you go. There's the one line. Hey, there yeah. it is. Yeah. Um, are you logging off? Okay. That was okay. a log is joke. This, uh, is this dog day afternoon? Or yeah. Hey, oh, good yeah, cool. Okay. I mean, hell well, of a movie, right? Looks well, like they were, on, they were on trans about, what, 40 yeah. years ahead we, of everyone else? Like Jim Norton. And in a pretty... <laughs> Like Jim Norton, yeah. And, and in a pretty progressive way. Like, there aren't cheap yeah. jokes about it. It's just kind of like, yeah, that's who I like. Right. That looks yeah. like me that's after my set for. last night. It's, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's a remarkable movie. I read that movie, uh, that book, actually, before coming on, I was like thinking about, oh, okay, just kind of have recommendations. People talk about movies. I read the Tarantino book, 
uh, cinema speculation mm. over the summer. And I basically stopped watching new movies. Whoa. I'm just watching 70s movies now. 70s. I would really recommend, like, yeah. you go, it's the best decade for, for music and for film. And I think it's maybe analogous to what comedy is doing now. Because comedy is, the, the, the companies didn't get involved. Yes. Involved. Like, the, the corporations didn't get involved yet. So in the 70s, it was kind of auteurs doing their thing. Yes, art without committee. Yeah. Let them go. That's why Curb is so good. Just let them go. Yes, he's got that status where he can do whatever he wants. Also, yes. late si right. it kind of started like late sixties, I think, when you sure. got, when you had like Bonnie and Clyde and like The, the graduate. graduate and those. That, I would say that all fits into that kind of that. 70s yeah, late sixties, yeah. early seventies. Yeah, but it's kind of great though. And he's yeah. like the Tarantino book as well. If you get like the audio book, I love the audio book. I mean, we spend our lives traveling, so it's just listening. Same. Yeah. But Tarantino reads the first like five chapters, and it's so you're just caught up in this guy's like passion. Yeah, yeah. it's so fucking great. He's such a nerd. He loves it. Okay, I love it. I can listen. To him all day yeah, huge great. fan i heard him talking great. about the movie thief the other day and oh. just just hearing him talk about other movies he loves yes like you're right it's so contagious his passion and and he's talking about how wet the streets are in that movie yes. i love just like oh little things like that he goes yeah michael mann would walk around with a water truck and dampen the streets so it looked like gritty in detroit yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the little things yeah. yeah you kind of would go well why do that yeah, I often think that when they've got an establishing shot that clearly cost a fortune, you go, "Ah, oh, we could have lived without that." <laughs> right, but then it's just a play. But, yeah. then, but then it's a part of the movie in a way where you're like, I mean, I was watching a Woody Allen movie the other night, uh, Sweden Lowdown, and you're like, just these cars. Like Woody Allen movies seem pretty low budget. Just these cars in a period piece cost so fucking much. Oh yeah, to the set detail. that up, it's crazy. Yeah. Yes, it's weird as well. Where you kind of, I think you can slightly spoil it for yourself by knowing too much about the production. Yeah. Rather than be kind of taken away. Agreed. Yeah. You want to be lost in it. But then you hear about all these Tarantino weird movies, like this Apple cigarettes, and he has all these connections from movie to movie. And you think, does that help the movie, or does that just show how psycho detailed he is? And that's why they're good. You see what I'm saying? Which one is it? Do the... Yeah, he's created a whole world that he yes. us into, like an alternate universe. Right. I mean, that thing about Inglorious Bastards, I mean, spoiler, uh, but the Inglorious Bastards and... The, the uh, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, mm -hmm. which I watched. And obviously, I watched it as a guy that's... I've read a lot about those murders. And so you're watching the whole thing with this sense of sort of horrible anxiety about, oh, what's going to happen? And then it doesn't. Yeah. And you're kind of... It's like the sort of genius of it. It's a twist. Yeah. It's like a bit. By the way, Once Upon a Time in Nazi Germany was the original title, and it got shortened to Inglorious Bastards. Mm. And if you notice in both movies, he sort of makes up the ending like a story... Like a storybook. Yeah. yeah. Alternate yeah. ending. Alternate ending, yeah. Wow. Yeah, yeah I That's mean that was happen. I remember seeing Inglorious Bastards in the theater and people were just applauding to Hitler getting shot and you're like, What a fucking weird movie going moment. Uh, but where would you have to see that movie that they didn't get applause? <laughs> how, how deep in the south a lot would you of have to go of... before Ah <laughs> or Palestine. Hero dies. <laughs> or Palestine. But yeah. <laughs> Uh, we saw Django in the theater, yeah. and we were like, look at these white people getting shot because you're so wrapped up in it. That you're just like, yeah, kill the honky. Yeah. Well, it's extraordinary. Yeah, he does feel like he gets permission. He gets like, he has that kind of- um, He's got a, a little curb, backlash. The curb status, but I think he's able to kind of sure, you know, no, go no. through it. It's, he, a, it's a weird thing. Like some people are grandfathered in. Yeah. And actually, if you had to go through committee, what you can say on television now in a late night set or whatever, you know, you just, they go, no, no, you can't say that. that exactly. That. It's nothing. It's but nothing people now. kind of, it's a weird thing. I think like comedy lives in that space between public and private discourse. Mm. Like how, do, how do people really speak? That's good. And how, how like they speak on TV. No yes. one speaks like that on, you know, you watch people on Good Morning America. No go, way. Well, no one's having a conversation like that. No, yeah. it's all HR over yeah. there. Yeah. And later on, we'll be baking cookies. <laughs> <laughs> Join us later on, we might be drunk. <laughs> We've got traffic Park. and travel in a minute. <laughs> oh, Park, for uh, example, is the, like... uh, the pumpkin spice lattes <laughs> back. So <laughs> it's just, what? Yeah, we're making cider. South Park is grandfathered in. If you started in the 90s, you can kind of still get away with right, doing yeah. the shit they've done. But it's, it's very... Few people can get away with like, it. It feels like like uh, a Family Guy as well. As well. Yeah, just uh, the writers great. on that are fantastic. The, so that many thing jokes. Of, uh, they've got um, they've got a great podcast. Have you listened to that? No. Um, another uh, a typically disgusting display. Another Seth MacFarlane. No, no, it's not Seth MacFarlane. It's the writers on it. It's uh, the Sulk oh. and um, oh, Sulk's funny. I mean, just so good. Great, it's a great podcast. Like about it's uh, by writers for writers who hate writing. It's ah. a great podcast. Yeah, a typically disgusting display. Fantastic podcast. I'd really recommend it. Okay, I'll check that out. Really fun. Just such funny boys. They do Johnny jokes at the beginning. They do like, they make themselves do Johnny Carson style jokes. Oh, like a monologue. Like, because they go, look, we're writers and like, it's comics as well. You start off like, 
reverse engineering like how do i write jokes yeah and then you they just like go okay well let's just do it every week as, a, as an exercise we're at five oh, each hell yeah it's really good and they're sometimes terrible and sometimes magnificent sure that's some i mean sometimes i'll just write headline jokes just to like get the Jesus engine going, going. Yeah. yeah and you kind of that thing of like that muscle of i'm working on a thing at the moment where i'm i'm like i'm trying to do a writing course to teach people how to write jokes because it feels like it's a bit of a lost art it feels like people are there's a bit too much magical thinking about it where people kind of go oh well it just comes to me mm. and you like it's like people that play music and they don't know how to read music you can, right it's, it's better if you can read it it's better if you know it is what the, the fundamentals are, how to do it yeah the fundamentals that thing of like getting back to headline jokes you kind of write those and you're kind of in that spin so then when something happens in life you're kind of you're thinking in joke formats that's so cool because remember when you started you were so lost you were like how do i do this you'd read joke books you'd watch comedians but that was about it there like, wasn't really a tutorial or anything there was slightly that kind of myth of Oh, he's a genius. Uh, he's a funny guy. He's just a funny guy. He's just, oh, wow, that guy's just a genius. No, he sat down and wrote that. Exactly. Chris Rock is, I would say, the GOAT. For me, the greatest ever. We're and, fans. And you go, you look at his material, and you, go, you look at an hour special, and you go, yeah, there's seven hours that didn't work. Yes. That you can't see. Exactly. That he tried in front of an audience and went, this is going to be good, and it didn't work. And you you don't get to see the working out. Yeah. That thing of like the reverse engineering. We do of, see it sometimes at the cellar because yeah. he and I love watching him at the comedy cellar because he just he doesn't do the loud kind of arena or theater Chris Rock voice. He doesn't do that kind of like the, you know that mm. Sam Kinison almost yeah. like slam dunking jokes. He does a, he just like talks out jokes. He's talking yeah. at this energy and but, that that's cool to watch. But it's it's interesting the the um the thing I've kind of been working on is the on performance is it's about ninety two beats a minute. Mm. He's perfect 92 beats a minute seems to be the right rhythm for speech if you're kind of hitting that word. Yeah. It's like I, I listen to a lot of songs that are 92 beats per minute pre going on. Oh, it's a better show. Like that in the pocket of that rhythm seems to be where spoken word works. Whether you're doing comedy or giving a speech or whatever, Obama's about 92 beats a minute as well. Right. Well, Seinfeld has that rhythm where they might just laugh because he stopped. You know what I mean? Yeah. It might, might not be a funny joke, but. What's the deal with tables? And then they'll laugh. And you're like, I've done that's... a thing where I'm doing like two shows in a night and I do the wrong punchline for a joke. I've done it like a handful of times, but every time I remember. And it often gets a laugh. It still works. Of course, because the, the rhythm of the show and people are like laughing before they've... Yes. Because it's such a social activity. But you feel totally. like a fraud when that happens, right? Oh, I feel, I feel like, what are you people even doing? Yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> it feels like there's a, yeah. there's a, 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 a glitch in the matrix. Yes, yeah. yes. Hang but on, it... they would have laughed anyway. Yeah. I know, it kind of hurts. It's that thing of like, what what laughter is that thing, it's such a social noise like you could watch the best on your phone on the bus on the way to work or on the subway the best comic and then we watch chris's last special and, no it's fun well, it's good it's good yeah it's great yeah but you go and see it in an arena with sixteen thousand people it's like ah oh, you're laughing and you release the endorphin and the serotonin it's like it's the perfect it's such a social thing laughter yes. as opposed to like it's my theory on why thanksgiving or christmas in the uk tv is the best Mm. Because you watch it as a family. Oh, so that thing of like the difference between your favorite movie, like oh, it's a Christmas movie, we love it, we watch it every year, and you watch it with five of your family, yeah, and you all laugh together, as opposed to the rest of the year you're watching on your own. That's it's so boring. funny you say that because I notice commercials will get a laugh in a group. Commercials are the least funny thing on the planet. It's horrible writing, but you'll put like eight people together in a room and a commercial comes on that's humorous. There'll be a chuckle, but you yeah. would never laugh at that alone. Yeah. It's, it's also it's, it's also weird. such a bummer that we don't like I think of what you're saying we don't really see comedy movies in the theater anymore and some of my best memories are like wow well, why do I like The Hangover so much I saw it in the theater and a ton of people were laughing yeah, on a totally. Friday night and it was yeah. packed yeah and That's you great. were like at the that thing of like if you see it like I remember my favorite thing about when I started comedy when I like gave up the day job and was being a com was seeing movies in the day. I kind of mm. used to love that thing of like going to the cinema. Love that. I like, and it just felt like freedom to me. I like, I'm so into movies. I remember I used to work and I used to put in meetings, like bullshit meetings, uh, one at like 12 noon and one at like two o'clock so I could go and see a movie in Leicester Square in London and, and just kind of come back to the office, go, yeah, I had a couple of meetings, I'm back. Yeah, oh, that's like, fun. Just kind of Do you remember the movies that you, that you went to see? That would have been like, uh, I don't know, like, I'm just trying to think. No, I don't remember kind of I what, love that freedom I though. what era. That's... Yeah, that, that thing of like, Seeing them in the movies is like such a, I don't know, just feels special. Yeah, and you're, it's kind of empty. You kind of feel yeah. like you have it all to yourself. Yeah, that's movies the are, best. It's, it's not quite the same as live. No. I think there's a theory of it. You never forget who you've seen live, good or bad. Like, you, like there's no, sometimes you'll be halfway through a movie on a plane and go, 
have I seen this? Yeah. <laughs> like that, ha- that can happen with a kind of nothing movie. But you see someone live, it's like it's forever. You remember that thing. It's such a big... I don't know. I saw Cosby. I, I dozed. I forgot the whole thing. <laughs> but... I saw Cosby live in Montreal about... Oh God, it's got to be 15 years ago now. And it was a masterclass. No, I mean, it was he's like, one of the best. It was, it was really interesting like how long he left it between punchlines, the kind of cadence of his speech, the way that he... I mean, I think that thing of... They did that documentary and someone had the great idea of going, the artist formerly known as Bill Cosby. <laughs> Let's take... If you can't separate the artist from their work, really, what are you... But he well, was also, you're talking about music and beats per minute. Cosby was such a jazz guy, too. Sure. There is something mm. musical about that. Oh, delivery, yeah. You know? I think I think we're living in, I mean, for me, or whatever, I, I talk about this a lot, but the that idea of like comedy is going through something very special at the moment. We're so new. This is such a new thing. You don't it think just, it's going to burst? I, the boom we're in? I don't, I don't think it started. Woo! I hope I think, you're right. I think Chris Rock is John the Baptist. I don't think Jesus is even here yet. I oh. Think it's like, I think it's like a different way of speaking. So that... <laughs> That comedy course thing of like going teaching comedy, I think it's going to be. I think we should be teaching in schools. Is my don't theory. give it away though. You don't no, want no. these these rubes doing think, it. That's is all we have. Think about what what does comedy give like a young person? Like you're trying to find your voice. Right? Sure. That's what you do. Well, that's what the teenage years are about. Point you're of trying view. Trying to find like the idea. Like people saying, you know, online. I, I don't feel comfortable in my own skin as a teenager. You go, yeah, that's what being a teenager is. But You're isn't that a, part of their lifestyle? They have to learn that. Yeah, but that, I'm saying comedy gives you that, right? I you, see. You, we sort of go through that as comics. You sort of find your voice. You didn't find your style immediately, and it yeah. kind of found you. You didn't choose to be the kind of comic that you are, right? Yes. Liners and stories, and it's just you are what you are. Sure. Like I'm, I'm better at jokes than I am at stories. Yeah. I try and write more stand-up now to kind of work that muscle. But it's like it's not; it doesn't come as naturally as jokes mm-hmm. for me. But it's like you find your voice, and then it's about performance and and being able to communicate with other people. Like there's so many things that young people need. I I think it's be a legit after school activity. I think it's interesting. I would also throw this in the ring, and I don't know how you feel about this, but I took an improv class in college, and I'm not an improv guy, but I would go talk to girls at bars, and boy, did it help. Or you go to a job interview and you want to just be able to go back and forth with the uh, the boss. I think an improv class could could uh, comfort. Yeah, it could teach it, some kids something. Yeah, it's like it's that kind it's, of self confidence. It's also like yes, anding. It, it's a perspective, right? It's a lot of perspective. Is comedy? It's yeah. Like you step back from the awkward thing and go, "This is going to be a funny story later on." I can see there's a bit of perspective. Right, right. Actually, the lack of perspective is where you get kind of that anxiety. Do you think anything has to do, because you say it's a sliver of window between what people actually think and what we're supposed to say? Was that yeah. what you said? Do you think there's anything to the, we don't go to movie theaters anymore and laugh, this is a way to connect socially again? We're all on our phones, we're all up our ass, we're all on apps. I mean, the comedy seller thing is, you know, everyone has to put their phone in an envelope. Yes! And they, they're they annoyed by it. But I love it, and too! And then it's so good for them. It's so good for like, them! Even that bit before the show when they have to have a fucking conversation with their friend or their date and go, what's up? And you, you see people in restaurants now, and they're both on oh, their phone yeah. Googling, and you go, no, they both want to be here, but they're both desperate for that dopamine hit. The and the new, the new, the I new. I once saw a guy walk into the cellar and put a decoy phone into the envelope, oh. and then he had another phone. Or maybe he just had two phones. A I don't decoy, know. Yeah, yeah. A, a two phones. That is, a, that is a drug dealer or a pimp. Right? Yeah. Right. right. <laughs> What's the second phone for? Nah. Yeah. Never, never you mind. <laughs> His other family. I don't yeah. know. Yeah, exactly. But you're right. But I think... Younger people, I don't want to generalize, I think they have one inkling of discomfort, and then they go to this. It's like a pacifier. So I think if you can get over that, maybe that's why the crowd work thing is, is so big right now. It's the only time you interact with somebody. Yeah, that, that thing of, uh, I don't, it's, it's, is that thing like boredom doesn't get enough credit? Boredom's like my, huge. My childhood was full of boredom, mm-hmm. and you'd wait for the TV show. And you sort of think about the thing you remember is, I don't know, whatever you watch when you were a kid, the A-team, and you'd be watching that. And if you missed it, you missed it. And it was a moment in time. But you don't think of the boredom before and after. Right. But actually that boredom is kind of where your creative yes. mind comes from. Like the, the gift of boredom is huge with writing jokes. Be bored. Be bored more often. Well, you have to and be let your mind wander. You and then know? that thing of like anxiety doesn't get the credit it deserves. Mm. Yeah. Anxiety is a huge part of my kind of creative process because that thing of like, if you go, if you've got your mind whirring the whole time, I'll write jokes. Yeah, because that's something to do with your mind. Right. If if four in the morning when I'm not thinking about jokes, I will just I'll go into kind of um, just thinking about what's the worst case scenario. What's the what's the worst thing that could happen? In yeah. The world and 
All right, I'll be creative about that. Oh, yeah. It's also stress. I mean, sometimes you're stressed about something, the thing passes, and then it's like the floodgates open. You're like, joke, 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 or premise, at least something, mm. you know? Mm -hmm. I, I mean, I remember Louis once said to me, he calls the phone the pipe. He's like, put down the fucking pipe. The oh. jokes are written in the abyss. You have to be lonely. You have to be isolated. And I, I do think there's truth to that. Oh, he's, yeah. He's really he's really jumped into that. <laughs> yeah, the pipe. <laughs> <laughs> the um, Yeah, it's, it's interesting, that thing of like... Uh, I mean, it's always it's always the thing. Every self help thing is it's always deferred gratification. Yes, like putting the phone away. We did a thing on holiday a couple of years ago, which sounds really kind of you know me and the missus like put the phones in the safe in the morning. Mm. Like you check not, you check Princess Diana hasn't died. You check the big she is there died. Any fucking big put, yeah, oh, you've got to keep up the deck. The, you check put it in the safe. And then you kind of have a look at six o'clock in the evening or whatever. We're in Hawaii. Best. By the way, your, your phone so and your chill. gun in a, in a safe. Yeah. yeah. How dangerous <laughs> it is. And well, it fentanyl. feels like we're like, yeah. uh, sometimes when you sit down at a table like, and everyone puts their phones on the table, it does feel like the Wild West. Yes, yeah. totally. And yeah. then when you actually try and remember boring. the name of the movie or the, or the actor without this guy Googling it, uh, you know, yeah, you use yeah. your mind. It's like a muscle. Totally. Yeah. I think people have that. There's that, um, what's it called? The uh, Dunning Kruger. You heard of yeah. the Dunning Kruger yeah, effect? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That idea that people think they know more than they know because Google gives them a false read uh, on right. they know. So right. people don't know what they don't know. Right. And they exactly. think they know. Yeah. So people being experts, so, you know, if you ask an expert on anything, they go, oh, it's really complicated. Right. But if you ask someone that knows, you know, ask a cab driver, they go, real simple. Here's what we're going to do with the economy. True. <laughs> True. Yeah. But the cab driver thinks he's dumber than the other guy, but yet he knows more. I that's why these that's... OnlyFans stars are, are putting together the uh, fucking Middle East solution. <laughs> she hasn't yeah. reconciled with her fucking dad, but she's got a two-state solution. <laughs> <you know. laughs> they all got an opinion. Yeah. Everybody's got an opinion. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Without the research. But have you heard that uh, that experiment about the leaving people in a room alone with a buzzer, and it shocks you? And if you leave someone in a room long enough, they'd rather be shocked than feel the boredom. So they'll just hit it just to feel something and do something and have something happen wow. whether the rather than just sitting there having their own thoughts i mean solitary confinement is the ultimate punishment right uh, well electric chair then solitary <laughs> yeah i think solitary's i think solitary is like i think if we had to do it i think we'd come out with a with a one-man show <laughs> I well, think don't, we'll, don't threaten us with that i think <laughs> give us a comedy show at least <laughs> well the one-man show i was chatting to mike Babigli about this and he made a great point about how a one-man show like a really thoughtful what like okay it's a comedy special oh no it's a one-man show that what's the difference two moments where you tell the truth two moments where you go there's no punchline at the end of this i'm not undermining the thing i'm just gonna tell the truth about this moment that's that's enough that'll that's a one-man show okay it's interesting that thing of like you don't have to give that much right in terms of like a, a heartfelt moment to for it to kind of really i see what you're saying it's emo comedy yeah <laughs> that's what it is that's know? kind of an oxymore but yeah. yeah that's a good point more punchlines. That's what we need. Thank you. I'm I'm a fan. I mean, Mark and I were like, you know, club comics always. We it was always like, you know, I feel like the alt rooms gave you a longer leash, but I kind of liked having a short leash. I liked having to like be like, bam, bam. Like, I I felt uncomfortable if I wasn't getting a laugh. Yeah, I think that like that fastball thing of like, I'm all fastballs. Yeah. And that thing of like, you you can you earn a story, or I think you earn a point as well. Mm. You can make a point. If you have like if the punchline's big enough at the end and you've got like there's a reason to say it. And and audiences are really smart. Like they, they get what's okay, he's saying something here and this is just a silly joke. That like they, they get yeah, it. I, hope I think you're people right. kind of like when you read like when someone gets cancelled or whatever over a joke, you go, kind of, This is some nonsense. Yeah. The audience knew what was going on there. Right. There's no hate in that. This is a, fine. Yeah, it's like that Bill Burr thing. You're mad about the joke, but they jo they put the joke on the news. They were in a comedy club. Knowing it was yeah. jokes, well, now you took it out. Big difference between telling a joke to a theater full of people at nine o'clock in the evening and shouting it through someone's letterbox yeah. at nine a.m., which is what's going on on Jesus. Exactly. <laughs> Actually, I think the last two or three times I got cancelled, and there's been many occasions. You kind of look at the joke written down in the paper and go, "Gee, who said? Oh, I know, right, I said that." Right. Well, that seems a bit much. <laughs> well, it's the same as going to a porno theater or a sex show and then showing the sex show on TikTok. You're like, "Jesus Christ!" Yeah, but in there, it was supposed to be there. I had a woman write a hit piece on me once, and she quoted one of the one of the bits. The only bit she quoted properly, I was like, "I think it holds up in text." Ah, yeah, that's I'm a not, good sign. I'm not. But isn't it weird? There's no like comedy. Doesn't we don't have books? 
like there isn't a book of your material. You, oh like, yeah, no one's done like a. Carlin I think, did it. I think well, Seinfeld did it too. Yeah. But like Mind it was Kampf. like there was. I mean, you get to a. <laughs> Sorry. You get to a level of. Uh, they, they, I loved Sarah Silverman's bit on Mein Kampf. Hit me with it. In the la- in the last special, she goes, "My struggle." That's what it's, it's called. <laughs> yeah. My struggle. Oh, I'm struggling. It's like that's a hilarious. new take on that. Right. After how many jokes about Hitler down He's the a years. victim. He's a snowflake. Yeah, yeah. That's hilarious. My gag on Hitler was, uh, yeah, you know, not all, not all bad. He did kill Hitler. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you give credit where credit is due. That's great. If, if, Dana, Dana if you'd Gould killed Hitler, you'd never stop talking about yeah. it. <laughs> that's true. It'd be your whole thing. <laughs> right, right. Dana that's Gould great. is the great. You saw the Dana Gould bit about Hitler? About no, what's how, the he was married for just a few minutes and then killed himself. <laughs> Marriage is hard. <laughs> I I've got a line in the new show about um, how people get more right wing as they get older. It's a good thing Hitler died when he did. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Why was he going? Right. My Hitler bit was, uh, I thought he was great. All right. Okay. That was it. <laughs> <laughs> joking. Joking. But the fact you have to say joking is like... I've, I know, I've, but I mean, there's a couple like, idiots that, out that there. that thing of like, this is kind of great. Like the stand-up thing for you guys. It feels like you guys, since I last saw you actually, I haven't seen you since pre-pandemic, but it feels like both wow. of you have like like popped. Oh, thanks. Yeah. So I feel like the last specials, whatever, the, the, the one that got... Tra- you did the one on YouTube that got transferred to... Uh, Netflix, right? No, Is I did another did one both. on Netflix. I did a YouTube the, one. But that first one was like, that felt that felt like that was like the level up and then the... The not a lot, of, not a lot of people. Great. Thank you, man. Not a lot of people put specials on YouTube at the time, and uh, it. I mean, February 2020. A lot of people are home, you right. know, for the right. next few months. Uh, no, but I, I don't think anyone watched it because they were home and there was no other media available. I think it was like a really good special. That's why. Oh, and I it's like, man. it's also because of YouTube. It's very word of mouth. Yes. So even more so than Netflix, you're kind of, you're kind of watching on the phone or on the computer. So you're kind of messaging as you. Oh yeah. Right. I'll forward that to my friend. I'll, like it's it's an easier thing. Like felt like totally. It was something that kind of spread out there. And you get and a little underdog. Soup to nuts is fantastic. Oh, yeah. geez, but that really thanks. felt like again that like it's like. But are you like theaters now? Are you clubs? What theaters, the, baby? Theaters. He just did the garden. Uh, the theater. Yeah, I was the theater. The, and I yeah. played that once. It was phenomenal. It was really. Awesome. Yeah, it was a cool night. Uh, but you know, like I'm, I'm going to go back in seats, right? I mean, it's yeah. like a proper sold it out. Yeah, I, I'm going to hit clubs for the uh, like December through February just to tighten it for another special. But uh, yeah, it's been theaters all year. It's been yeah, cool. it's kind of amazing. Have you guys gone out together? Because no. I noticed they a couple of people did a thing. We dated it once. John, <laughs> John, John Stewart and John Mulaney went out. And Pete. Yeah, I saw that. And you kind of think it's quite an interesting thing to kind of go. There's no one that likes your stuff that will go, oh, yeah, I like him, I hate him. There's like, Anti-Semites. it feels like it would be a, an interesting thing yeah. to do. We, to we get that, I get that a request a lot when I do Q&A. They're like, bring Sam out, or how come you don't do a show with Sam? And it's just because we, we don't have to split the money. I wonder, the, I wonder though, if like, someone like Jon Stewart, Pete, and, and Mulaney, it's like three different kind of generations yeah. of comedy uh, you know so i think that might tap into something different for them i don't know i just think it's that thing of like it's it's a uh, oh he's on in town i might go and see that like it, it becomes like oh no we have to go and see that look at seinfeld and gaffigan they're out together now are they yeah, yeah. i mean that feels like an embarrassment of riches yeah Fanta- I, I mean fa- but it, i sort of hear that and go yeah no i mean you'd have to go and see that yeah clean comedy would you, baby would you ever who? do that with anyone i think i w- i mean i would i certainly would I'm, i've been chatting to a friend about it recently like that thing of it's bigger than the sum of its parts is that thing if you go well it, maybe that's like an arena thing maybe that's so you play a bigger room and go well it's a big event of an evening yeah Chappelle and, and rogan did a few of those yeah i did like uh why did i do i saw Chappelle in what was it january february we were in australia together and we and i opened for him in uh and the Rod Laver Arena, he did like in the round. Wow. I mean, an arena in the round, so good. Really? There's no, there's no bad seats. Yeah. Like, you could be a slightly more expensive to organize, but you go, if you're in the middle, it's like, it's smaller than the garden, really in every direction. Sure. And you just kind of rotate, and it's the same number, you know, it's three screens above you, and everyone's got a great view. Do you find it weird to rotate? Like yeah, a little the, bit, but little it's bit. you get used to it real fast. I mean, all right. Great. First time I saw you, I think, was on the game show Distraction. Oh, yeah. yeah. That was Pull a funny show. But they did like a thing on Distraction where they did uh, the American version. They took out all the funny and just did the game show. In the UK version, it was like <laughs> it was like a, a really funny show. I mean, show. You, got, you got your lines in it is my it point. Was, you know, it was, it, you was, know. Uh, it was crazy. It was the, uh, yeah, I'll look. 
Well, this is going to be some years ago. At past 11. How, what, what year? Wow. 13 years ago, it says on YouTube, but who knows when they uploaded it. I think it. it was a lot longer than that. Wow. Be... Wow. Wow. Babyface. Yeah. Jimmy Kimmel looks terrible. <laughs> And the Iraqi's new foreign minister has promised him a fair and unbiased trial, followed by an execution on July 1st. <laughs> <laughs> so oh, let's stop this. I can't. <laughs> <laughs> that's the, uh, that's a yeah. good joke. Yeah, it's, uh, it's solid. It's a lot of, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I made a lot of telly over the years. It, uh, that always felt like a side hustle. The TV, sure. TV feels like a, someone else is going to make a decision. Yeah. One day they go, yeah, we've had enough of you. Right, Goodbye. right. I'll just or stand when, here. Because that thing about like the cancellation thing is all about stakeholders. That's the key thing with cancellation. Mm. Who are your stakeholders? Who have you got? Like if your management walk out on you or the TV company goes, we're not working with you anymore, that's the cancellation thing. Yeah. So you don't want too much of that going on. You want you your, want own your own shit. Independent. Well, you know. Yeah, well, that's why we work with writers sometimes. And I can tell the writers like, oh, what are you, crazy? And I'm like, that's a great line. They're like, yeah, but we can't. I'm like, oh, you have a job. Yeah, you have okay. a boss. <laughs> you have a tax return and all no, that. You're right. Like, we are yeah. so connected to the audience. We're like, no, that line killed in Pittsburgh. And they're like, yeah. we can't fucking put that out there. I'm like, no, I already did. It's done. Yeah. It's out there. It's on the internet. Yeah. I have a, uh, I'm doing a Fallon at some point, And they're like, oh, you got to cut that. You got to cut that. I'm like, I'm just not going to do it. I mean, they, these lines murder. They're, they're the, I put them in because they work. So what's the point of me well, you know, making it worse? harder for sure. To, uh, just getting jokes approved. I mean, you're probably, you've done so uh, many. I, I find, I, I mean, I've done a lot of, like, I haven't done one recently, but the, yeah. the late night, I tend to get like, I do it when I, if I have a new Netflix, mm. uh, you do like a, a Fallon, whatever. Sure. It's such a thrill to do those it's shows. It's fun. But you go, Showbiz. out of an hour, I can maybe get five minutes of clean stuff. Yeah. yeah, You know, you go, because I don't really write that stuff a lot because you, you go, well, you sort of go to where, you, you know, you want, you want ants put down sugar. You know, what's the reward? And the reward is the big laugh, the big guffawing, oh, I shouldn't be laughing at that, but I'm laughing at that. It's such a sweet laugh. Yes. Yeah. And you go, well, you can do stuff that's more family friendly. Occasionally you come up with something that's just would work but it's not really my sense of humor. Right. Yeah. But it's almost kind of an exercise. Like, let me see if I can dodge these laser beams and still kill. So it's yeah, kind of an yeah. exercise, but it's also like, eh, is this, what's the point? I'm not being me. Yeah. So I don't know. Maybe I'll work around it. Who knows? When well, have you got it? When have you? Well, it's just we're still in, the, in the, 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 the material phase of like, cut that, keep that. And so I'm still massaging it. But it makes you just want to drop it all when they're like, that's not going to, that's not going to fly. And I'm like, yeah. it's a joke about homeless people. They're like, eh, homeless people might hear it. I'm like, they're not going to hear it. They're gonna, at most they could lip read through, <laughs> through a window. Yeah, um, through a radio shack window. Yeah, can you say homeless anymore? It's like, it's, it's, uh, unhoused. It's like, unhoused. Who knows? It's so like, condescending ah. to. Yeah, it's like, they were changing, changing the words as well doesn't make any yeah. difference. It's like, no. <clears throat> it's I've, I've seen homeless people. Woke. They're not politically correct. No. I had a line yeah. about, um, yeah, like the, <laughs> the PC thing doesn't get to the underlying issue. Yes. It's just virtue signaling. So if you go, it's, oh, it's, it's really diverse around here, lock the car doors. <laughs> is is like, that's as bad. That's the most racist. <laughs> sure. It doesn't sure. change anything. It doesn't make it better. It doesn't yeah. make it better. Like a sex worker. <clears throat> I'm still peeing in her mouth. You know, just calling her a sex worker isn't going to help this <laughs> help this poor woman's situation. God love her. Oh, yeah. Sweet gal. Miss you, Aunt Rose. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Nice lady. Had the best line on that. Um, uh, Patrice, God rest his soul, had the best line on that. Like, he found out he was um, diabetic. Uh, oh, yes. From, from peeing in his girl's mouth. Tastes like birthday cake? Yeah. Sorry. Your pee tastes like birthday cake. You've got to go and see a doctor. <laughs> It's like, that is, uh, that's real cake. love. Uh, birthday cake is so I'm, funny. I, I listened to Mr. P recently. Uh, so good. So good. Yeah, I got to work with him a little bit in uh, in Montreal. Scary got guy. Got to do some shows. Yeah, genuinely, like, like. If you travel a lot like we do, it can be hard to fall asleep in an unfamiliar place. Or if you just have a drinking problem, right? If you find yourself up all night long wondering if your hotel room is haunted, it's time to check out Beam. Beam's Dream Powder is actually a healthy hot chocolate that'll put you right to sleep. I use it. It actually really helps me. Haven't really gotten those weird nightmares, which I would get on, uh, what do you call it, melatonin? Always get those. It is nano CBD and all other ingredients, all natural to knock you out without making you feel groggy the next day. We might be drunk listeners. Get a special discount on Beam's Dream Powder for their best-selling healthy hot cocoa for sleep with no added sugar. Now available uh, in delicious seasonal flavors like cinnamon cacao. 
Is that right? Sea salt caramel. I'd like, can I get some sea salt caramel? I like this stuff. And white chocolate peppermint. Better sleep has never tasted better. A recent clinical study revealed Dream helped 93% of users wake up more refreshed and 93% that Dream helped them get a, a more restful night's sleep. And you know me. I got the drilling in my home. I want to kill these people. It's awful. If something terrible happened to them that I didn't, okay, that would probably be legal. Don't really, but you understand my anger. If you want to try Beam's best-selling dream powder, take advantage of their biggest sale of the year and get up to 50% off for a limited time when you go to shopbeam.com slash drunk. The discount is auto-applied at checkout. No code necessary. That's shopbeam.com slash drunk for 50% off. It's very good stuff. I, I use this and I, I endorse it. Figuring out the perfect gift for someone can be hard, not anymore. With this plate, you can turn anyone's hobby, passion, or even the most embarrassing photo in a high-quality metal poster. It's fun for a prank, too, right? This plate takes just 20 seconds to install, will not damage your house. They come with a magnet that sticks right to the wall. Then this plate sticks to the magnet. Easy as that. Yeah, uh, these I haven't used, but they look actually awesome. And, uh, and they have all these cool license design like star wars stranger things sports all that type of stuff so uh they have what you need to make the season bright makes a great gift and you can save up to 30 percent off when you click the link in the show's notes discount discount will uh be automatically applied to your cart when you click the link or use code drunk when you visit display.com that's display.com code drunk or click the link in our show's notes great gift and uh they got a lot of fun stuff they got back to school i think as well which is one of my faves you know i love rodney it's a uh, it's a cool gift. Check it out. But so fucking good. Oh yeah. Did I you guys mean, get along? Yeah. I mean, great. I think it was like a different world. Worlds colliding. You know, it's kind of. Sure. I was pretty pretty new and kind of doing a nasty show thing, and it was he was yeah he was just who else up. was on the nasty show? Just with trying you guys. to think who else was. You know, he moved to England. The nasty England. show it was like a moved to England for three years because he said he wasn't hitting in America, and he's like, I just need to go to England just to work out. Yeah, it's an interesting thing that I I, I think when if comedy ever gets you know we've got the best job in the world but sometimes you you don't realize because you're doing it every day sure so that thing of like traveling more is like i don't i kind of the american comics i think are slightly so they wait till they're really high status to go out to the rest of the world but go early you think like but you I'm can't maybe, sell tickets it's hard with the flights and the hotels I think, it, I think it's i think you can sell tickets now i okay. think it's like there's a weird thing where you go there's a there's a certain thing about the, you know, the podcast and the netflix thing it's gone global so you can. Uh, yeah, but those new realize. comics aren't on Netflix and their podcasts. Well, I'm saying you, you, know. guys, you guys should be well, traveling the yeah, world. Yeah. You guys I should just be doing Europe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm Europe, going to Australia, Australia this weekend. Australia's amazing. Yeah. That's the Where best. Where are you going? Where are you playing? Uh, Sydney, Melbourne, Brisbane, Adelaide. That's it. Right, yeah. yeah. I did it in January, so January February. It's Never amazing. been. Great crowds. Oh, it's, it's unbelievable. It's, it's so great. You're so going to have a blast. I'm nervous. The flight stresses me out. You get the business class. I'm here, 20-something hours. Yeah, 21. are you stopping on the stopping on the stopping way? Stopping in, uh, I believe, San Francisco. That's what I did. I th yeah. I, I did it one once. The first time I ever went, I was kind of nervous about that. So I flew to from London to Vegas, two day, two three days in Vegas, which is all you ever need in Vegas. Yeah, <laughs> and it's, because it's the same day again and again. Oh yeah, and then flew to Hawaii. Had like four days in Hawaii, Jesus. and then flew to Australia. It was like the per because there's no jet lag. Right, you're kind of eight hours, eight hours, eight. They hours. They tried to get me to stop in Hawaii, but I'm, I'm on the road so much this year. I was like, let's just. I'm going. I'm coming back. I need. Well, I need some time in New York. And Maui's not yeah. what it used to be. Yeah. <laughs> What's the? But, so how long are you going for? Are you gonna like ten days. That's a pretty short trip. It's that is short. short. Like, Whoa, yeah. eleven maybe. I don't know. Yeah. Wow, you're getting in and out. It's like a heist. I'm just gone every week. I, I just if I can if I can get like another week in New York, I just need. I'm I'm never here. Yeah, it's yeah. A, it's a weird thing when you're. I mean, I've got kids now, so it's a, mm. that thing of like trying to tour in a different way, so you get more time when you want. I mean, it's great for being because uh, the UK, I can kind of be home every night, right? Even if you're you know Manchester or Newcastle or whatever, you can get back and be up with the kids. But it's just it's a sleep deprivation game rather than I'm a flight away. Yeah, so it's a bit easier. I've started doing two shows a night as well every week. To, to I love two a night. Yeah, seven and nine thirty. I think it works for people as well. They kind of that you either get drinks and dinner before or afterwards. It right, works. Right. Do you are you sleep deprived a lot? Yeah, I would say yeah. Same. M modafinil, I would strongly recommend. Oh, what's this? Because <clears throat> I can't sleep. No. no. Okay, so uh, my friend with narcolepsy turned it on. I am not a doctor. This is not a medical recommendation. We're just guys talking about pharmaceuticals. Just chatting. Modafinil is, it was invented by the French military in the 70s. So they were trying to come up with something that wasn't amphetamine to let their soldiers go for longer. 
So like ah. to go for 72 hours straight. So they started using it with people with narcolepsy in the, uh, in the late 70s, early 80s. And it's got no side effects. It's not like coffee or... But you're not like shaky and jittery sure. or whatever. But you can just function for longer. So if you don't sleep, like when you get up, when you wake up like six in the morning... Oh, this is an upper. Yeah, take 200 milligrams of that and then you're good for the day. You can oh. sort of perform whatever you need to do for the day. But I can't sleep. This is going to ruin me. No, but if you can't sleep, you sort of do that and then you, you have like a full day. Great. And then you'll sort of sleep afterwards. I see. You'll okay. Be fine. It doesn't affect your ability. So what, have you got uh, a sleep disorder or are you... I just, you know... I don't know. I'm a mess. I, I think it's just really? we're doing shows at night. Just adrenaline. We drink. Can't, yeah. Yeah. It's a it's a it's a big thing though. Like if you're not getting kind of eight hours, if you're not kind of properly, because all the REM stuff from sleep, all of the stuff that really yeah. does you good, is between six and eight hours. Yeah. Ugh. So it's like it's that thing. If you're not getting eight hours, then you're not ever really getting that. Uh, I have drilling like for the last 14 oh, months. Oh, I saw this. Jack oh, yeah. Hammering. I'm, I, I'm losing just, my mind. I'm, you go, not, I'm losing my mind. Which is, I mean. It's crazy. What? You're doing okay. You got a little bit of gold. Move. I've, it's I, a beautiful I apartment. It and it's, I, you bought it. Yeah. Ah, they yeah. pulled the wool. It's like he married a trans person. Didn't know it. <laughs> last minute. That's how long has it been? That's not the comp uh, I would give it. How long's the How long's the building been going on? Apparently, it's been happening for like three years. It's some corrupt city shit called Section 11, where I think construction companies just make a killing. Section is never good. Yeah. C-section, yeah. Jewish section. So, so section what are they smoking. building? They're, it's trying to make sure the bricks along the, you know, because it's a crazy city lawsuit if a brick comes loose, sure. falls, and kills someone right. on the street. Right, yeah. But I'm like, dude, three years, you could build a fucking building. Mm -hmm. What are you doing? So they're just jackhammering, and it's... <laughs> All right, sorry. And we're back. It was a, it was a long story. <laughs> and we're back. I, I farted on my girlfriend the other night, and she goes, you know, I don't want to date Mark Norman. Oh, she hit me with her that right. should be a bumper I sticker. Think, <laughs> I think... I think she probably does. <laughs> I think that's... But, the, but, but that lack of, like, I, they, for whatever reason, they weren't doing it today. I'm in a great mood. Yesterday, I was like, I want to fucking kill myself. Oh, it's crazy. Yeah. Just lack of sleep is... It, it, dude, sleep is everything. It's, a, it's a superpower. Yeah. It is, yeah, it's tough. It's uh... by the way, these Hubermans, all these guys are like, you need eight hours of sleep. If you don't get it, you're gonna you're gonna die. Then he's like, get up at five a.m. You gotta get up at five. Start your day. Start working. Do a to do list. Start working out. I'm like, which one is it? Do I sleep for eight hours? Or do I wake up at five? Well, I think the waking up at five is for the next day. I think if you wake up at five and have a full day, then well, what the next gonna... night you will sleep. Do I go to bed at eight p.m.? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, that it's tough. These yeah. guys, they they're virgins. <laughs> Yeah, it seems all of those guys get up very early. I'm oh, sure what that's about. Have you seen Cold Mark shower? Wahlberg's thing? It's like... Oh, what, they're getting up in the morning and... Yeah, but that's... And 30 minutes he's praying. No! Oh. It's bullshit. It's in the thing. I, I work out, I pray for 30 minutes. I feel like you can cut out the prayer. <laughs> yeah, what are you, like Muslim? we're okay without the prayer. <laughs> Come on. Pray at night. What's the difference? God doesn't care. I mean... Yeah, the morning routine is, it's just to make everyone feel bad about themselves. That's what it is. That's what it is. You get up, you write a novel, you do your taxes, you, you do 12 push-ups. Yeah. And then you have a, a weird athletic greens. Then he's I like, do, I do that every day. Four. I have those. I do too, actually. Yeah. Just wake up at 2.30 a.m. 2.30, <laughs> you see? These people are insane. Do they have that's wives? Just, I mean, that's just jet lag, isn't it? He's just on a different time zone. <laughs> I, yeah, I hope he's so. He's basically living in the wrong time zone. He needs to move eight hour, <laughs> an eight-hour flight away. Yeah. All right, well, he looks different now, too. I think he needs some sleep. Yeah. Do you, Are he you like a big exercise guy on the road, too? You're thin no, as I a fiddle. I can't exercise on the road. I've got like... If I'm at home... I can do it. Yeah. But the idea of like someone going to the gym in the hotel, I think that's like a superpower. I'm like bringing sweaty clothes in your hand luggage. Ah, please. I can't do it. I walk a lot when I'm, if I'm on the road. Walking's I'll huge. Like just walking and kind of thinking. That thing is like, that seems to be very good for you. Like the 10,000 steps thing seems pretty good and pretty easy to do. Especially if you're in a strange city. You yes. I'll go out and I'll at least see it. Yes. And see what's going on. And you got the audio book going. And they say walking boosts creativity. It boosts your mood. It's great for so, you. Yeah, it seems to, be, seems to be pretty good for you. Sorry, but people Exercising on the road just seems impossible. Is that a lot of your writing is just like, because Norman paces. Yeah, do I got to pace. You, 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 do you sit? Yeah, do you, do you walk? No, I, mean, no I, do, I sit and do work when I'm kind of traveling on trains or planes or whatever. And it's, that's the editing process. So the writing is just whenever anything comes to you, when you're kind of walking around having lunch oh, kind of on your own, me too. constantly writing yeah. down ideas, thoughts, there's a thing, there's a thing, there's a thing. And then you, the, the editing or the sitting down trying to work out, well, how does that work? 
I've got like a, a couple of bits. I, I I brought in a couple of bits. I, I know the podcast, but that thing of like things I'm trying to do at the moment. Yeah. Where I'm trying to get it to... Uh, to organize, to, to Yeah, like to trying click. to get it to like what... It's a fun idea, but it doesn't quite work. You have to convey it to them in a yeah. comedic way. You can't just say this thing happened. Like Berbiglia has this great trick that I always use where he goes, you're writing and he goes, now where would you laugh? And it makes you go, oh shit. I thought I was just a funny guy who could talk on stage, but when you're actually writing and looking at what you wrote and go, where would you laugh? It makes it real. Yeah, it's objective yeah. now. It's, it's not interesting just... when you try it on stage and you get the laugh in a place you didn't think you would get the laugh. Oh, that's a bummer. Yeah. I mean, well, I'll but take it's, it. But, it's, but... It's, sometimes it's good, though, because you're like, oh, sh well, you're just getting extra laughs, you know? Sure, but the yeah. ones you thought would hit didn't. And you're yeah. like, oh, I don't understand this art form. Fuck. I got a theory at the moment about body count. I'm working on this bit about body count. So people talk about body count and the amount of people they've been with. Oh, right? yeah. And then you go, it's not about that. That's if you want to moralize. I've got no problem with anyone's body count. But if you want to moralize, it should be about the rejection rate. Because <laughs> if a girl is a 10, like a stone cold smoke show model, gorgeous, every guy she's ever met has hit on that girl. Yes. Everyone, right? So, and, and then she's got a body count of 30. But that's pretty. That's pretty. That's pretty good. Like great that's, odds. It is hard to get in. She is Harvard, right? Right. Whereas actually, if a, a lot girl, of Asians. if a girl is a is a um, is a is a swamp donkey, a uh, munter, like she just <laughs> fucking, she's a she's a three at best. Okay. Like a, a fucking horrible looking, and she's got a body count of five. She's not more. If only five guys ever asked. Everyone fucking got it. Oh, it's, that's it's a great rejection. point. It's a kind of interesting, like the, the it's per capita. Yeah, what's the what's the thing? Trying to find the right thing, and I think that's like a joke that will work. that'll be built on phrasing. Yes, it'll be the right term. Like you know, sometimes it's like it's a joke, and sometimes it's like a turn of phrase that's really sticky. Yeah, oh, that's a nice. What's the term for ugly? That's going to be the thing that's, and then that thing of like going if if a girl is a if, if a girl is a ten, she's a smoke show, she's gorgeous like a model. Like, no one in here, but you, you've seen them. There like you go. That thing of like that <laughs> extra laugh. Of, yeah. Like there'll be something along the way that gets it. I think yeah. it's like it's an interesting idea, but it's not kind of there yet, and it's longer form because normally I'm in such a rush to get to the punchline. Right. That's long form for you because that yeah, feels that's, pretty quick. Oh no, that'd be. I've that, heard that's him do a, like wow. I've heard him do like tw well, know, twenty word jokes. Yeah, dude, yeah, yeah. I mean, even like dwarf shortage. Yeah. That's <laughs> <laughs> a little Brad Williams action. Yeah, <laughs> that'll do. Yeah. I got you. Oh, interesting. I'm trying to blow out more because I my writing it's so quick as well. And it takes so long to write an hour. Well, we had the thing. We had an exchange when, when Soup to Nuts came out because I, I just taped my special and I watch Soup to Nuts and we have the same joke. And it's great. Minds. It's like, so we, we have the same joke and it's really interesting because it's the same comedic. I could tell we wrote it in pretty much the same way. And yours is three words. And mine is like the end of a bit, and it's like really, I've dressed it up. Right. I've like, I've so dressed up the bit. Yeah. But it's basically the same gag. Yeah, that's good. Thanks. Well, you so know what? We'll be we'll be we'll be in trouble when it we'll when get my, trash when my, on Reddit. Yeah, we'll get trashed. It'll be yeah. <laughs> yeah this guy stole from. Me. Oh, I can't wait. I had it out first. Just saying, but uh, <laughs> but yeah, but no, it's you're across the pond. It's flattering. Yeah, it's uh, it's it's good. It's kind of it's normally annoying, but I called you on my arc, and I is it all right if I keep it in? Sure. I had a similar thing. You know Danny Jollis? Yes. He's a funny, funny. comic yeah. L.A. guy. He did a really interesting thing with, the, with his uh, last special where it's like a choose-your-own-adventure. So he'll say, like, teachers suck. And then I'll be like, or are they good? And you can choose which way he goes. So he writes right. a bit on how teachers are great and the other ones, how they suck. And you, every premise, he does both angles. It's kind of wow. interesting. Yeah. I think in a great routine, though, you can kind of hit both of those things. Agreed. Sure. You can kind of go from each. But also, the, you know, it's. The best example of that, the Jim Jeffries gun bit. Right. I mean, it's like a 15-minute bit, but he hits this angle, that angle, yeah. defends yeah. it, hurts it. It's great. But he it's doesn't good. do guns are great. I guess that's true. You know, I mean, so it's like, yeah. you know. You can kind of have your cake and eat it a lot of the time as well because you true. kind of go, well, you have that joke as well. Sure. Yeah. You have all the angles. Probably why there's so many comics who are lawyers. Demetri Martin, uh, Al Geraldo, Al Lubell. Yeah, yeah, it's just pleading your case. Like, yeah. hey, I'm winning. I'm winning this. What, uh, what was the bit? What, my bit? The Danny Jollis. Oh, well, we had a similar bit about how we're all trying to be inclusive, got to have diversity, but no one gives porn the love for how diverse it's been for decades. Interracial, gay, trans, lesbian, you know, midget. 
animal, yeah. all that. So he had a similar take, and I called him, and I was like, "Is this too close?" And he was like, ah, "I think you're good." So yeah, yeah. It's, I mean, it's, as long as everyone's cool, as long as yeah. there's no there's no kind of oh, you know, I think you straight lifted that. It's like no, it's, right? It's obvious. Um, Have you ever had a guy really lift from uh, you? Yeah, blatant. I, yeah, like there was like an old school comic in the UK did like a, a full bit of mine, but I think it's just ah, I'll write something new. I write a lot of yeah, jokes. With you, he stole fifteen seconds. Yeah, it's like, it, is, it is right. that thing as well where you kind of go. Yeah. It's, like, it's a big deal when you start out. If someone takes a bit of yours, you, ah, yeah. but then you, if you're if you're writing enough, if you're writing kind of a thousand jokes a year, you get less precious about the material. I think initially when you've got like your first twenty minutes, it's so precious. Of course, and then when you go. Well, you, you're you're the gun. The jokes are the bullets, and you have they're kind of disposable. You're kind of going. You've heard going the Louis that. story with Dennis Leary. Do you know that I'm an asshole? Yeah, that was a Louis that was bit. A Louis bit. And then Louis saw him do it, and Dennis Leary was a bigger comic in Boston, so he was like, "Oh, I guess he took that bit. That's gone." And then like 12 years later, they were on a O and A together, and Dennis Leary just gave him 20 grand. And he was like, sorry about that. Did he really? Yeah. And Louis was like, all right. But he had to just drop it. He was like, it was one of my big bits. And then this wow. guy made a huge hit song out of that bit. And he just had to drop it. And he did it with Bill Hicks. Oh. Dennis Leary. Yeah, the Bill Hicks thing is... Uh, uh, that, there's a story about the uh, Bill Hicks at the very end, when he was dying, gave up smoking, like four weeks before he died. Mm. And then went, why are you, why are you uh, giving up smoking? And he went, well, I figure if I do it, Dennis Leary oh. will do it. Give, giving the kid a break. Wow. Damn. Pretty hot. I mean, That's good. great line. love it. Zinged him on the deathbed. Yeah. Get the man a water. Yeah. Oh, whatever you got, yeah. Thank you, Matt. Christ, this guy's starry. Huge, huge. Demanding it. Sack Think of about the bits I'm working on. What are you guys working on? What bits have you got? Uh oh. I got oh, one I tried last night. I'm like treading very cautiously with the stuff in the Middle East, but I tried one last night. Oh, I think there's something here maybe about like, look, I'm a Jew. I mean, it's a thing. I know I could pass for both, but I am a Jew. And like, I have a thing about how like. Actually, uh, yeah, I think they could they could all vote for you. <laughs> yeah. Maybe yeah. you should be the lead because I, really, I feel like that could have gone either way. I'm covering the bases here. <laughs> but the angle is like how, like, look, as a Jew, I have to admit, we have a, we have a hand in the media and- uh, nah. And basically, I don't. Will... I don't. I mean, I don't want to. I don't want to denigrate the podcast I'm currently on, but a yeah. hand in the media. Get over well, yourself. I'm <laughs> softening. I'm, <laughs> I'm softening really? the setup, yeah. Jimmy. I'm oh, softening yeah, the setup. Oh yeah, they're controlling the media. Uh, <laughs> this, my friend, is not Fox News. I think. <laughs> we, what? Huh? You don't think we we have some hand? He's saying you're more than a hand. No, I'm saying this. This. Right, right, no, my this point. podcast. Yeah, it was. Yeah. It was <laughs> right, right. Um, so. Is it is power. a little, it became quite tried yesterday. It's like, you will see like headline, like on the news, it'll be like, you know, 7,000 Palestinian babies murdered. And then like the lead story is man on the Upper West Side tears down a poster. Nah. And you're like, yeah, both are bad. Right, right. One is, one is worse. Right. Yeah. I mean, yeah. but posters, that is annoying. Like to go to Kinko's, you got to fucking, you know. <laughs> That's the true. Tape is not cheap. Tape is not cheap. You got to put it up. Yeah. Printer the ink. Then you got to redo it. Tape is not cheap. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so this is like, I think this I'm, is the start of something. I think, that, is there something on the posters? Yeah. There's something on the posters. Yeah. Which is, uh, listen, it's too soon and all that. But at some stage, someone could do something on the, look, I get it. If your cat is missing, you put up a poster. Yeah. In the neighborhood, yeah. Don't mm. put it up six thousand miles away. Oh, that's it. That's good. Who's help? Who's help? oh? Well, I'll, I guess there's a missing person. I'll look. Right. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm on the Upper West Side. I think if they're here, they're safe. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, the the, the hostages is like I don't think we're going to run into them. Yeah, but yeah, that's, exactly. yeah, yeah. I don't know. It, it feels like it's that thing where you go that there's there'll be something that comes out of that. And I always think jokes are a really good um, uh, barometer. For what, like the things you can't joke about, like certainly in, in Great Britain, if it, 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 once there's been some level of justice, once you're through something, then the jokes you can kind of process it. And if there's if something still feels like it's ongoing, it's like it's difficult to kind of. Of course, yeah. No, there's there's no relief laugh yet. Yeah. So that's right. why I can't. That's why it's like okay, we'll see. We'll we'll do this one in a few months. Yeah, but yeah. I'm putting or hopefully a few. I mean, whenever it fucking. There's relief. That's one great thing about the internet is I have a couple Hamas Jewish bits, and in the room they're like ah, and I put it online and it, they killed, no pun intended. But it just it blew up online, yeah. no pun intended. But uh, it murdered, uh, but it, it did great online because you don't have to worry about the guy next to you how you're reacting. You yeah. know, you can just enjoy it, and I think there's something to that. With darker jokes, sometimes the internet is weirdly 
And yes. Better and worse, right? Because you do deal with the people that are like almost like walking in the room, like what? There's like, a little of that. Yeah. But you do get the people that are like, oh, this is my type of comedy. Yeah, yeah. It's like porn. They can't look at it in the office, but at home and shitting, they can look at it. Yeah. Well, you, it's that. Yeah, it's a weird one, isn't it? One, someone. You've always got something that you go right. You can't joke about this thing. Yes. yes. Like everything else in your set was fine, but that joke was terrible. Like I was think when, like, I, you know, on the last special or whatever, I got in trouble for one joke, and you go, Yeah, but did you not see the rest of it? <sighs> the, the 45 minutes leading up to that was Which was the one yeah. that got you in trouble? I, I, it was a joke about um, gypsies. Yeah, a joke about gypsies. But I mean, it was like, it was, it was a weird thing where you kind of go, um, you. You you know you tell a joke and it's about like it's about the Holocaust and the and and flagging up the fact that uh, I said you know six million Jewish people died in the Holocaust it's the it's the worst thing that's ever happened and no one talks about the hundreds of thousands of gypsies that died in the Holocaust because no one ever wants to talk about the positives. <laughs> but it's that thing of like it's pretty so clearly dri- the joke is the misdirect. Also. Yeah, it's a, yeah, but it's such a clear misdirect as well. And the but written down it's like oh this guy doesn't care about gypsies and you go. No, Hang- and also a lot of the people online, I suspect, did not know that the gypsies died in the Holocaust, or did not know that homosexuals or disabled people were killed right. in vast numbers by the Nazis. And it's and they're moralizing, and they just found out from me. And you go, ah, I don't fucking know. Well, it's yeah, the Cecil yeah. the Lion people. It's like you didn't <laughs> give a fuck yesterday, <laughs> exactly. but today this is yeah. like front page news for you. Yeah, I mean that's hilarious. I that- forgot about them. It but is that still. thing of like, I, I'm sure there are worse things in that special. I'm sure if you sure. if you go through it, you go. Worst Holocaust joke ever. I think I've told you this before. Junior Stopka. That's a good joke. That's a great joke. He's like, uh, you know, there was a lot of uh, Down syndrome people that were in the Holocaust as well, but there's no photos of them because they're all smiling. That's, that's a good bit. That's a very good. I mean, all right. Dark, isn't it? <laughs> but so, a lot of the <laughs> jokes, so, I think yeah. your joke is about the misdirect. And I think, and like, you know, the right turn. I mean, I remember I used to have a joke back in the day where I was, you know, my ex never made me wear a condom because she was on the pill. Mm-hmm. Ambien. That was a joke. Yes. But like, there's a way you could be Great like, that's joke. a rape joke. It's about the misdirect. Of course. Yeah. Also, I must say that Sam was heckled at MSG this weekend by his ex. From like 15 years ago, yeah. I, we, I told us before you got here. It's, yeah. It's, what, what? Where? She was the one he ambient. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Uh, what did I? My, my fir- first ever Holocaust joke was the, um, the <laughs> they say there's safety in numbers. Tell that to six million Jews. Ah, that's fun. It's a very clean. I, don't, I mean, it's, it's one of those things. Joan Rivers had the best line on it. Joan Rivers was, I think she was doing like a casino show and she told a Holocaust joke and someone got up and walked out and made a real fuss of getting off from her documentary. Out. And she and she goes, yeah. uh, "You say never forget." This is how I remember. Ooh. And I think it's really true, especially with what's going on in the world today. You go, no, no, joking about these things, talking about these things. How else are we going to remember it? Because on this podcast, we're definitely not making serious points. Yeah. But those jokes are no. This the worst thing that ever happened. Lest we forget. Let's, let's yes. talk about it. Let's talk about it all the time. We're bringing awareness. I used to have a Hitler joke. Uh, he was bad with money. He he didn't. Uh, he was he wasn't good at saving. And uh, I was like, man, it's too bad there wasn't a group of people that could have helped. <laughs> What's that great? This is an old. Yeah, no, this is anonymous. Maybe you can yeah. find the the guy who wrote this. But uh, he goes go dies in Auschwitz, goes up to heaven, and he sees God, and he goes, God, I got a I got a great I got a great Holocaust joke, and he goes, ah, uh, uh, it's not funny, and he goes, I guess you had to be there. Yeah, Which who is, is that? Such yeah, a, no, it's it's trad. It's an old trad joke. It's a great joke. Trad? Yeah, it's an old. I mean, that's an old joke. Oh, it's been oh. around since like the fifties. That is brilliant. It's a brilliant line. I think Gervais tells it to Seinfeld that's on where I heard in it. Cars. That's yeah. where I heard it. Uh, but it's a brilliant. I had to pause it. I was like, it's Jesus. like it's almost like it's one of those things where it's almost like uh, you know sometimes you get a joke that's kind of got some wisdom in it. I guess you had to be there. Whew. Oh man. Well, you took a stock Dark. punchline and you said something kind of deep. Yes. You know yeah. exactly. Which is kind of fun too. Is yeah. It's, yeah. But you're right. People pick and choose. I did a joke in Kentucky with the R word. And uh, this lady comes up. She's like, I have a Down syndrome niece, blah, blah, blah. You got to take that out of your act. And I go, how'd you feel about the Holocaust stuff? She goes, that I loved. <laughs> so you're like, oh, it's just when it's your thing. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's, it's when it's your thing. But also, it's also that thing of you go, it is the, the release valve. The amount of times you get people that the, the joke is ostensibly about something and they're so glad to be recognized. And, you know, if you, great. 
It and people works. are going for relief, right? They're going to they're going to escape. I think yeah. they're going to a stand up yeah. show. So when when the one thing does land on them, sometimes they don't take it well. That's sure. Just, I mean just remember the is. Bill Burr thing on the morning show where she's like, Do you really need to do the pedophile priest stuff? And he goes, Do you think the priests need to do it? Yeah. You know, like yeah. I'm doing the joke, they're doing the thing. No, she goes, Didn't don't you think you went a little too far? That was goes, it. Don't my, you think they favorite, went a little too that far? That was it. My favorite gag on that was the uh, why would you become an Islamic fundamentalist suicide bomber. On the off chance, you might get 70 virgins when you die. Become a Catholic priest and have them now. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> Fun. By the way, teachers fuck more kids than priests. Fun fact. Yeah. Take that to the bank. That's well, just, we don't we've all, we don't we've, You've seen yeah. this one? Okay. Yeah, we've seen no, no. But the, yeah. Oh, this is great, too. This is a whole different thing. But it's, yeah. but it's just not related to what we're talking oh. about. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Burr and funny. Yeah. I pulled yeah. it up. She basically says, are women funny? And he's like, can you follow me? That's all you got to worry about. Start your own shit. Stop stop worrying <laughs> about the like, industry. Yeah, it's... it's pretty great. <laughs> all right, I got a bit here. Go on. All right, it's a two-parter, so feel free to kick me in the balls right. here on either part. So my lady, she's a real tomcat in the sack. And she likes being insulted what, in the what bedroom. What year is it? <laughs> she's a real uh, tomcat in the sack. You know, it's, she's, the, it's the early 50s. Yeah, she's a real hot I think soda. Milton Burl has a similar bit. <laughs> <laughs> Go on. <laughs> Dev, different dick. But uh, so she's, you know, she's, uh, she's feisty right. in, the, in the boudoir. You know, she's fun in the sheets. But she, uh, she likes being insulted in the bedroom. But nobody told me that the insults are supposed to be sexy. So we're going at it. I'm like, ah, you can't cook. And that hits. And then she's like, what? I'm like, oh, yeah, you slut. And she's like, thank you. And I'm like, uh, and that needs more, I think. But then I, I flip and I go, I'm the opposite. I'm already too insecure. I like being complimented in the bedroom, but they're all. she's very full of shit with her compliments. She's, she'll be like, oh, you're so huge. And I'm so bad at dirty talk. And I was like, uh, so are you. And that hits. But it just feels like two one-liners back to back. There's no real point to it. So it's hitting. But it, it feels like it, it. There's no meat to it. It's just yeah. two quick lines. Well, you, you. Firstly, your girlfriend is dynamite in the sack. A real, <laughs> a real tomcat, I would have said. Oh um, yeah. I think it'd be on the. It's on the insult, isn't it? So what's the insult? What's what's the phrase you use? What's the? Uh, uh, I say you can't cook. No, no. But what's the what's the phrase that gets you into it? So she likes dirty talk. She likes to. She be, likes to be insulted in the bedroom, but nobody be, tells you that the insults are supposed to be sexy. So yeah, you can't just insult be, her. Sex, sex she wants to be called maybe, a whore or a dirty girl. I think it's the. I think you got it the wrong way around. I think it's like you go, or maybe you, the whore and the dirty girl and bad girl, all that first. Yeah, oh. and, then, and, then, and then you build up, and that, and you can't cook. Oh, and you can't parallel park, and you you <laughs> you talk too much. You do whatever the thing is. Yeah, that yeah. The, you don't the, make enough money. I'm right. really carrying us. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. you keep going. That should be the turn. Yeah, that the, should be the turn. Oh, the, okay. Because it's so already because I think the dirty talk's quite funny of the. You're a bad girl. You're, you're a bad girl. Feels like that could be the turn. You're you're, you're a bad girl. I think. Right. You're, yeah. Your personal hygiene's not great. <laughs> That's a funny line. <laughs> oh, yeah. I think yeah. you need a different deodorant. It's like, yeah. yeah. It's, but you're yeah. saying do all that and then the can't cook. Yeah, I think that you, it's yeah, the build. Yeah. Got it. It's okay. Because I think that's quite funny to hear that kind of the dirty talk of what people say to each other in the bedroom is funny anyway. Because yes. out of context, it's just like. Oh, that that line of the you know whatever. All right, I'll try it tonight. But then, the, what's the what's the insult to you? You want she compliments me, but it's all lies. She'll be like, "You're so huge," you know. She's yeah. trying to be nice while we're banging, and I'm so bad at dirty talk that I panicked and I said, "So are you," calling her fat. Yeah, I think that kind of, that kind of works. That it? hits. It's a nice way out. It's a nice little button on the whole thing. <laughs> Uh, and it and it val it uh, validates or justifies that I'm I am actually horrible in with the dirty talk. Sounds like you're bad with small talk, like you're trying to have small talk with her in bed, and it's coming out dirty. Like so are you? That's what oh, you say to right, your, right. Your butcher. Right well, back at you. Yeah, I was trying to give it back. Oh yeah, maybe that's a a better way to say it. Because I also don't want to touch on Regan's. Uh, have a good flight. You too. Yeah, no, yeah, I don't think I'm not okay. Yeah, I'm so worried about that. But I don't know right. what, what else do men like being told in the bedroom? It's kind of it's you're so good. More... You're the best. Of, you're yeah. the best I've ever had. You're <laughs> yeah. You're so good. But then if I say so are you, that's not yeah. That's not no, weird. But, but the, you keep that. But maybe it's oh, okay, but add uh, to it. Uh, I had a girl once. Uh, I, had a, I had a bit about a girl I was with. Shouted, uh, "Daddy," when <laughs> having having sex with her, and I was I was out that window like a shot. <laughs> He's gonna wake the family. 
<laughs> there's, there's, there's some kind of something in that. Yeah, yeah the, definitely. Yeah. I know that girl. Yeah. Just trying to, yeah, it's good. Uh, all right, all right. Try it tonight. I'll try that 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 twist. Oh, the, the other bit I'm trying to work on at the moment. Maybe you can help with this. The um, uh, crazy is a numbers game. Okay, so something being crazy, it's about if enough people get involved in it with something crazy, it's okay. Religion is the go-to example. Oh. So religion, enough people believe in Christianity that it, it's Scientology. It's crazy, right? They don't have the numbers. As soon as they get to a certain number, it's not crazy anymore it becomes legitimate yeah but it kind of goes for lots of other things as well it kind of goes with with like uh, fucking pickleball the first eight guys playing pickleball what the fuck are you guys doing play a real sport but gets to a certain number this is absolutely legitimate i think that's that's a great premise there's something in the premise but i can't quite figure out where i'm going because the religious thing is like you you the takedown of that's pretty so I start you know, with Scientology you, right and go well they believe Zanu and, then, and except, the volcano except I would say stuff. violence is the only difference it's like a mass shooter you're fucking crazy a war we have to do this mm, that's, like that. that's 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 good that's interesting that's yeah. good I've noticed if you're working out murder, if you murder one person yeah. it looks real bad drop a bomb ah we had to, this was yeah we had to do this that's that's interesting yeah. it's for our country. Taking out the notepad. This is yeah, big. yeah, no, no, that's right. that's, that's that's good. That's interesting. School yeah. shooting mm-hmm. to war is big. Um, does it? It's kind of the flip. You could flip it with an orgy. You know, sex with one person. Normal. Sex in an orgy. I guess that's also normal. <laughs> I'm just adding numbers. <laughs> yeah. All right, bad example. I think there's there's something in that, right? There's something in the. But I think that idea of like crazy as a numbers game, like the things in our society that are clear, it almost goes to all observational comedy, which is kind of going, the world is mad. Yeah. But the stuff that we think is absolutely acceptable. So <clears throat> like tattoos. Tattoos used to be like a facial tattoo. When Mike Tyson got his facial tattoo, it was fucking crazy. Yes. People lost their minds. You know Mike Tyson got a facial tattoo. He's going to have Mike that forever. Tyson too. You're, I, this is insane. Yeah. And now a facial tattoo is, oh, it's, it's cool. It's like someone bought a new T-shirt. Huh? Right, Post no Malone. Cares. It used to be you were a badass if you had a t- Now it's nothing. Yeah. I'd say regular tattoos were like that. Like yeah. sailors and, you know, f- yeah. fighters had tattoos. And now every barista chick has a tattoo. I did one other last night I could try. And Please. This is a new one. Date a girl who, I used to date a girl who had night terrors, which was, uh, I mean, it's terrible. You get woken up. With just uh, here's the first angle I had. You get woken up by just shrieking, you know. So uh, <laughs> and it sucks because you have to be like, oh man, this uh, I'm so sorry this happened to you, you know. And she's like, it's really unhealthy to to wake up that way. I'm like, I know, I'm also waking up that way. Right, right. So that was the first. I, th- angle. I think I I do a joke before that. Yeah, yeah. going no no. So the, the 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 gag would be I used to date a girl that had night terrors. She would wake up screaming. I guess she wasn't expecting to see me there. <laughs> oh, like, almost like yeah. you, you can kind of have that as a throwaway before you get to the I had one other thing right, you, before you get to it. that's good I had one other thing throw in a rape joke before you start <laughs> might, might as well <laughs> um, night terrors is funny yeah. Jimmy wouldn't it be funny if in that uh, call me daddy joke if you were like quiet you'll wake your mother rather than the family oh, yeah, maybe like you're fucking think... a kid yeah well because yeah. she's saying call me daddy so maybe not, yeah. I, I, I dropped it because there was another joke that had like it was, you know, sometimes where you write two things that are kind of sure. in the same area, and you go, oh, that one's better. It's just, yeah, cleaner. yeah. By the way, I saw you at the oh, cellar. The, the, oh. the line I added on, I said, uh, oh, thanks, man. I added on, I said, uh, I dated a girl with night terrors. That's when you wake up screaming, which is, it's kind of weird. She's a white girl from the suburbs. She didn't serve in Nam. Right. That was the first part. Uh, <laughs> she would tell me, wake well, up. <laughs> Pink berry doesn't have a flavor. Yeah, what's she worry about? What's she, yeah, like talking to a dog. Now? What's wrong, girl? They're out of rosé. Yeah, Lululemon's yeah. closed. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um. Yeah. There's something else. I said one other thing last night. I got to. Li- I got to listen <clears throat> to the set. Yeah. There's something to that. There's something, 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 something with day terrors. You know, like you. You worried about other stuff. You know. This is why are you. You're just scared at night when nothing's happening. Other people are scared. Like people live in a bad neighborhood. You know, they have day yeah. terrors. I don't know. I think there's there's something waking up, screaming. Yeah, you're waking up the same way that if there was like a burglar with a knife. But she's like, oh no, it's just it was just a dream. Yeah, it's like you're making up shit to be scared about. Other people are scared about real shit. Yeah, you're being scared in a dream. Okay, uh, I had another 
I don't think we helped with that at all. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I said some stuff I'll listen to. Uh, dating apps yeah. are all based on the same premise, right? They're all based on birds of a feather flock together, mm-hmm. right? So it's match.com, Everyone matching up with people that you've got a lot. But that's not the only way the world works. The world also works on opposites attract. And I'm going to start a website. I'm going to make a fortune. It's going to be called mismatch.com. And I'm going to put people, you know, so it's going to be, she's a, she's a socialite, mm. um, daughter of a billionaire. He's a plumber from Brooklyn. Sure. You put them together. And then it, I think the gag is he's a, he's a guy from Palestine. She's a nice Jewish girl. When they met, that thing of yeah. like, they're like the weirdest couples that yeah. you can think of. I think that's the gag. Or, yeah. you know, an it is weird, the, and a progressive. The idea that dating sites are based on that premise of, oh, I like that movie. You like that movie. Maybe we should fuck. What? Yeah. That's, yeah. why would that be a thing? You're thinking of friends. She's, anti- <laughs> she, she she's Antifa. He stormed the Capitol. Exactly. Give it a chance. Yeah. You know? He's a cop. He, she's black. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Those th- I mean, they're very American. Uh, the, <laughs> yeah. 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 That's gonna, yeah. But it's interesting, those things of like couples, you, where, where, where you would go to the wedding and there would be no question of bride or groom. You go, I think I know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's know something to the, the Israel Palestine. It's, like it's a good, it's like a soft way to go into the joke. It's like, it's, I think it's funny. And it's something everyone's and thinking you, about. Yeah. yeah, that's. But I like the whole the bigger point of. I I I kind of coming back to your thing of like you could be Palestinian or Jew or Israeli, the the look. Yeah. I think there's something you should run for office in the Middle East. Yeah. And just never name who you're talking about. Yeah. I don't like these guys. Oh what, yeah. We got to do something done. about you know who. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What they've done is unacceptable, and I I know you all agree with me when I say, <laughs> we got to stop. Yeah. Th- those motherfuckers. I'm going to call them motherfuckers because yeah. they are motherfuckers. And you never come down on either side. I don't care who I upset. Yeah. I don't care <laughs> I'm who I say it. Yeah. This yeah. this has got to stop. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. <laughs> you put the middle in Middle East. You're right down the middle. Yeah. You can- <laughs> down the middle, yeah. yeah. That's fun. Something there. We'll shoot that sketch when you leave. We'll shoot it. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, All right. any, any peeves? You have oh. any pet peeves? Pe- oh yeah i got pep i was also thinking about the other day uh again i feel like comics we uh, airport material hotel material we talk too much about being on the road but people checking out of hotels kills me i know K- oh, kills me. You yeah. ne- uh, just if you're listening to this i'm going to save you hours of your life you never have to check out of a hotel you're not you didn't stay at their house <laughs> you're not saying goodbye to friends and air kissing just leave. <laughs> Just fucking leave. They don't need the plastic key back. Right. If you want, throw it at the desk. But don't queue up with your bags when I'm trying to check in and spend 20 minutes going through your, oh, the itemized bill. Oh, see, everything's correct. Right. Yeah, oh, yeah. I forgot I had a muffin. Oh, okay. They've I, ne- the hotels have never got anything wrong. They've never mischarged you. Yeah, I even enjoy, you know, there's, sometimes there's a little box that you put the key in, like checkout yeah. box. You put the key in that. I'll still throw it in the garbage. I won't even put it in the box. Fuck it. There's no. Ch- I'm not. I'm not giving you the satisfaction. I'm just leaving. No. Yeah, it's a. Good it, it, it's, uh, it's just so annoying. It's an. It shows an. It's amateur hour. Oh, you're checking out. Come on. I think people yeah. that never travel bug us because we travel so fucking much. Totally. Yeah. Yes, I think that thing of like you've got your. The method. Oh, what do you mean? You're in the wrong boarding group. You didn't know. Ah. I know. You ever see people walk down the aisle of an airplane and they're like eight, nine, ten, I'm like. What are we doing here? You're at 11. Just go to 11. You don't know numbers? Yeah, 9-11. But yeah, <laughs> yeah. it's silly. It's your lucky seat. Yeah. <laughs> the, uh, yeah, that's that's a, that's a big peeve. I'm trying to think of a good one. Peeves. Good one. The peeves. checkout is silly. These what, other, what other peeves you got? What else, what else um, annoying you? Other than your... I got this guy. He's the laziest guy I know, but he's like, man, he's like, oh, you're writing a movie, huh? I've been working on this movie for 18 years. And I'm like, no, no, you started... To write a title 18 years ago, you never touched it again, and now you get to say you worked on it for 18 years. You didn't work on it for 18 years. You worked on it for six minutes and never again, but that was 18 years ago. That's not working on something for 18 years. Do you see my point? Yeah. No one's reacting. Uh, no, I had the, the, <laughs> someone had a thing recently. Uh, can you Google this? It was yeah. the not doing the, not doing the thing. Not doing the thing. It's like someone came up with this list of like things that aren't doing the thing. Which kind of uh-huh. goes back to being stoic of like talking about doing the thing isn't doing the thing. That's why we uh, don't want to talk about our movie. And I don't want to go into detail because I don't know how long this is going to take. It yeah. might be years. Yeah. It's, what? it's not doing the thing. It's We've like a, it's like a list on 
Uh, it's a really good list, actually. It's on. Video? No, it's on. Hang on, let me let me find it for you. Hang on, I've got it somewhere. Um, but you, you can't get the credit for working on something for twenty years if you just started it twenty years ago and never did anything else. You see what I'm saying? So maybe yeah. work on a second screenplay. Obviously, yeah. Some do something. Write one page, but not even one page is written. But he's been working on it for twenty years. No, it's his life's work. I can't find this thing. Uh, <laughs> This is this is great radio. Um, <laughs> this is like the date you described, Sam. I have a real talent where I can throw something out and no one responds to it. I don't know what yeah. it is. No, it's, this is it's small talent. talent. Okay, it's um, uh, strangest loop. Oh yeah, I got it. Things that aren't doing the thing. Things it's a great that, list. Yes. I think this is like I read this quite a lot. Okay. Oh, hang on. What do, you, what do you got? Preparing to do the thing isn't doing the thing. Thank Scheduling you. time to do the thing isn't doing the thing. Making a to-do list. For the thing isn't doing yes. the thing. Yes. Telling people you're going to do the thing isn't doing there the thing. There it is. Messaging friends who may or may not be doing the thing isn't doing the thing. It just goes on. But it's so great for like... It's gold. Just, just like, I always think new comics, there's so much of that going on. You go, just jokes. Just do it. Just do the jokes. Yeah. So much of this is just like being a CEO though. You're just like, do this. And they're like, okay. I know, but I know a guy, I'm not going to say any names. His whole Instagram is him in a coffee shop with a pen and a pad and a coffee. And he's like, hmm. And he's he's like, I'm writing. All I do is write. Same act the last 20 years. Same act. <laughs> well, well, you know the guy the guy who always has to write out his entire set? And you're like, you've been doing the same jokes. Yes. Before every show, he's like, yes. no, nope, I can't talk to anybody. Let me just write Exactly. This I, I do exactly. Thing now it's pretty religiously this year. And it uh, it really it's really paid off. The I do new jokes at the end of every show. Yeah. So every show, theatre, whatever, doesn't matter how big the oh, room is, that. I'll do it tonight. Yeah. Get out a piece of paper at the end, and it forces you during the day because you feel like such a dick if it's stuff from last week. Uh huh. Because you go right, do it, bank it. Once it's worked like three times, I can bank it, and then that's going to be in the next show. Yes. But you kind of figure, well, it's it's okay. So you're burning through new stuff at like five minutes a night. And then you're kind of banking that for the next show. It seems to be such a good way of kind of working that muscle and constantly. Because sometimes, you, you know, my tours are like three years long. And you could write the show and do nothing for three years. Oh, yeah. Start with, start with a blank piece of paper. And it seems I've kind of done that before. And it's crazy. It's crazy. Now, you got to prepare. You got to do it. And that's a good way to do it is to make sure the audience, they're your, your motivation. Because you're like, I can't come up with nothing. Yeah. You know, you need, you need to put yourself against the cliff like that or else do the same shit. For the rest of your life, I had like it's not. I don't think it's a peeve, but I think it's like a, it's an idea. Like we had a lot of strikes in the UK this year. Like people, you know, inflation's gone through the roof, so people need more money, and they're you know working jobs, and they're not getting paid enough, and food prices are going up. Okay, so you got a strike. Same here. Okay, so but what they do is they go the guys on the train strike, and they don't turn up to work, mm -hmm. but they're on the picket line, so they're not sitting at home doing nothing. They're on the picket line striking. So I think what they should do if you're on a train strike, you open the ticket booths. And you let people go in for free for the day. Ooh. Because that hurts your boss, but it doesn't hurt your customers. That's good. Because you haven't got a problem with your customers. The guys riding the subway are riding the subway. The guys riding the trains are riding the trains. But you go, but fuck with your boss's money. Yeah. See, they, they take that more seriously. Is that oh, legal? Nah, probably. Okay. Pro I don't know what the law would be that would, that would prevent that. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, but no, I like it. I mean, that's way more effective. Yeah, because picketing. then you see some some results. Yeah, yeah, we had that with the auto workers. They just striked and uh, they won. Good on them. Yeah, everybody's striking now. The actors striking, the writer, a lot of striking. Yeah. I didn't realize it was because of inflation. Are the are the actors still striking? Now? Yeah. Well, by the time this comes out, probably not. I would say. Who this, knows? This, this is coming weeks, out in twenty twenty six. But, uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, Jimmy, why don't you plug? Can we plug gigs? Oh, you oh, got yeah. a, you got a hard out. I, no, I've got. It's not that hard an out. I'm flying uh, now. Oh, okay. Oh, I was oh, going to okay. drive to Boston. I'm flying. But the um, this is very fun. I've got uh, current tour y U.S. states. Yeah, there you go. I don't know why I'm playing. Tell me where's good. Tell me where's <laughs> good on these days. Okay, so I've got Boston Carnegie. tonight. Second, twenty six. Twenty six. So starting December. Okay. Oh yeah, I put in like double shows in December, oh. so I've got I've got to sell these hard. So people of San Diego, great club, great, great theater. theater. Yeah, it's a great theater. It's good. Okay, yeah. right and in then, the heart of the city. Where am I? The the December Wilton. Seventh. Wilton's Wilton. Sick. Wilton's that nice. Good? Awesome. L.A. Really okay. cool. Never been to the Grove. National Grove in Anaheim on the eighth of December. Anaheim's uh, a cool area. Two shows. Two shows in Anaheim. That's Disneyland. Yeah, first one's on. Okay. And I've never heard of the city at all. So oh, that's a casino. Oh, so, okay. Good luck. Casinos are tough. Is it? Yeah, usually. 
Okay, so what, how is it tough in a casino? I, I don't think I played. Well, I've played casinos in like South Africa. Sometimes but, yeah. they've gotten better. They've gotten better, but if you do the club at a casino, you're toast. But the theater is pretty good because people actually came out to see you. The I club think people had to buy a ticket away. Okay, yeah. Yeah. that'll be fine. It'll be I it'll think. be fine. And you'll get a nice room. And then uh, uh, Mesa, Arizona, on the tenth. Woo! Shows. Watch no out, idea. Trump Denver country. Denver at the Paramount. Damn, okay. I'm there this weekend. Badass oh. theater. Two shows. Really nice. Two shows. Okay. Cool. And then the Newmark Theater, December fourteenth in well, Portland, Oregon. Last time I went to Portland, it was like it was. I mean, it was like apocalyptic. It was like The Walking Dead. It was like it yeah, was crazy. Well, it's gotten worse. <laughs> oh yeah, a lot of tents. <laughs> it's, it's rough. How are they? Fentanyl, babe. They did the uh, free drugs or whatever. Decriminalized. That's the word. All yeah. drugs. Yeah. So it's not like <laughs> illegal, but it's not. It's <clears throat> yeah, it's weird. But they did that in Portugal, and it's really worked. Yeah. But what they did in Portugal was they decriminalized all the drugs. This is like 15 years ago. They did this in Portugal. Decriminalized all the drugs. But then what they did was really smart. All the money they were spending fighting the drug war, they spent on rehabs and education. And Ooh, they took do all that. that money. They ring-fenced it. And they went, okay, it's linked to inflation. We're going to spend that money every year on making this shit. Okay, because most people that are on heroin don't really want to be on heroin. They'd mm. rather not be on heroin. There's a hardcore that will remain. Yeah. yeah. But they get it for free now from the pharmacy. They get heroin for free, not methadone. It kind of works. I think I took a prescription on the road recently. I was like, yeah, some of these cities, you're like, oof, that Oof. CVS area. Mm -hmm. Oh, Not my great. God. I noticed that. I mean, the other pet peeve in New York the last couple of days, my, my other half was here with me, and we're like shopping. We're in a CVS. They're locking up the toothpaste now. Yes. Yeah. The stuff they're locking up now, you go, it used to be razors were locked up. Yeah. Because the razor was like, they was, I mean, those guys at Gillette, please. The, how much are you charging for a? I mean, eighteen ninety nine. Whatever that thing is, it's crazy. Uh, but the they'd lock those up, but now they're locking up fucking chewing gum. Oh yeah, yeah. The, well, the 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 grab and steal or whatever you call it. What do you call those? Smash and grab. Yeah, I think it really started during COVID when it was just they just would steal everything and people were like, yeah. But I'm yeah. going to Portland yeah. to get some manafadil or whatever the hell you said. Oh, yeah. I'm going to pick up yeah. a bottle of that. I'm pretty sure I'm pronouncing that wrong. This uh, schedule is amazing. 13th, 14th, 15th, 16th, <coughs> 17th is incredible. San Francisco on the 16th. Oh, no, I, I've just done Las Vegas. I think last Sunday I celebrated my 250th theater show this year. Good Lord. Wow. Well, the more theater in Seattle is like maybe the coolest theater. One of the greats. It's like, is it? the, it's like the best. You're going to love it. It's beautiful. It's huge. It's right. three tiers, but they're like well, I can, I can fill it, but not with laughter. Um, <laughs> so let's explain see. this. December 16th, San Francisco, San Francisco, and the 16th in Las Vegas? Oh, that's, uh, that's, that's March. Uh, that's March. Oh, December, what? March. That's yes. a big those jump. Are, those that's are, a big those are, jump there. Okay. Yeah, big jump. Okay. Big jump, not bad. Yeah, Vegas. Is Vegas going to be all right? Vegas is cool. Yeah, yeah. It's not my favorite. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to fly and I'm going to go and see that U2 show, I think. The, the Sphere. Sphere. Yeah, I really want to see it. Hell Who's yeah. Cool? Who's the first comic that's going to do that? I, I, mm, I think Hannah Gadsby. Chappelle, maybe. Oh, I yeah. texted Chappelle the other day and yeah. said, how come you haven't played The Sphere? What's going on? Because what he could do, he's like, he can sell infinite tickets. Oh, yeah. I would say he should just do a residency, he's, right? He's doing the Iron Dome. <laughs> oh, my God. Cool. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> nice. All right, uh, Mark, do you want your dates? Uh, sure. Yeah, what are you playing? I'm mismatch.com. That's my website. You don't say. There we go. Paramount this weekend. Oh, yeah. We're, uh... Starting the 25th. All right. I can't read that. Oh, shit, sorry. Blow that puppy right up, will you? Yeah. I think it, it does feel like there's a weird thing with American versus British comics. We get to theaters a bit faster. We kind of leave the clubs a bit faster. Yes. Because we've got such a nice theater circuit. You get on that theaters. Yeah. We get to laughter quicker. Yeah. But I know what you mean. <laughs> All right. Jesus. All right. All right. Just joking there, Carr. This so we one. got the Sanger Theater on November 24th in Mobile. Ooh. The Orpheum on the 25th of November. Hometown. In big, big hometown show. Luther Bank Center for the Arts. That's December 1st. Santa Rosa. That's sold out, I believe. The Crest Theater, two shows in Sacramento. Uh, Omaha, uh, Kansas City, Norfolk, Baltimore. You you know, MarkNormanComedy.com. Tampa Man, Theater, Florida Port. Theater. When, when are these? Uh, when are you going international? When, maybe that's what you guys should do together. Oh. I would do that. Yeah, but the international Damn, stuff. Of but like, you just did it. I just did Europe. I did a. I did a full Lisbon, Dublin, uh, Birmingham, uh, Manchester, uh, Hackney. I went all over. Yeah. Um, I think that'd be a good plan though, because the, the travel is like. It be that would be the fun thing to do. That's true. Together, That's like true. to go. Okay, we'll go and do like the Far East. If you do Singapore, Hong Kong, I've Ooh, got that in January. Singapore, cool. Hong Kong, all that stuff. Lady like, boy, booking those rooms. <laughs> yeah. The Lady Boy tour. Yeah, it's <laughs> not yeah. bad. That's you good. Don't, you don't hear a lot about the Lady Boys since trans happened. Yeah, no. they're not getting the. 
Bad the shine. Gross. No, they really. Yeah, you're right. When did you last hear the phrase chicks with dicks? It's been a minute. It has been a while, right? I wonder if they're pissed. Like, hey, you took our whole thing. It's like a, a cars when they did the horses. Yeah. You get I it. got a uh, Vegas. <laughs> I, I got... <laughs> what horses did to cars? That's what I, mean. I got the win in Vegas, December second. That'll be fun. Then we got uh, Tampa, Tampa Theater, the Fort Myers. Oh man, we're doing the same gigs. Yeah, and then uh, and then I'm going back to clubs for a while just to tighten this for Good the next for special and to write some new. Where are you going to take the special? Oh, uh, the Wil the Wilbur <clears throat> in Boston. Oh, it's right, a beauty, okay. great beauty. club. Yeah, oh, theater feels I've like a bet club. More specials have been taped there than any theater in yeah. America. Is that the one that's got the tables down the front? Yes. It's, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's pretty bad. I love it. Yeah, and then, you know, Buffalo, Springfield, Madison, <clears throat> Philly, Dania Beach, Omaha, Dallas, OKC, Irvine, Salt Lake, and then the special. So I'll see you guys on the road. Woo! And this awesome. new hour is cooking. Thanks, man. So check it out, folks. Um, get some Bodega Cat whiskey. Yeah, we're, get we're some whiskey. Where's the, where's the Bodega Cat whiskey? It's up on the bar somewhere. BodegaCatWhiskey.com. It's a ride. Go see, uh, nice. I'm sure a lot of you already know Jimmy, but uh, go see Jimmy on the road. One man. of the Great best. Joke may, may, maybe, maybe check out uh, the Netflix special first. See if it's for you. It's not, <laughs> it's not for everyone, is it? <laughs> oh, come on. Is this Bodega Cat? This is, you, got a, you know I got a whiskey. No. Really? I got a whiskey with... Um, uh, with like two, 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 uh, like weird, a weird group got together. It's called uh, Muff Liquor. Mm. Oh. Muff Liquor. <laughs> That's uh, fun. It's, there's a town outside Dublin called Muff. Huh. And there's a distillery there called Muff Liquor. Did you do it just for the name? Just for the name. I love it. I just love it. Just for the dumb name. But we've got like... Um, well, that's a cool the, bottle. Yeah, we've got the vodka, gin, and whiskey. But I did it with like... A, uh, it's like me and Russell Crowe and Ed Sheeran. It's a really odd oh, mix. Oh, wow. Of That's invested fun. In, That's pretty cool. It's good booze. I mean, like the, the vodka and gin's winning awards. Yeah, it's Jim Crow. All right. <laughs> pretty All right. There well, it right. is. Muff Liquor. Muff Liquor. That's great. I mean, it's a good name. That's a fun name. I went to Ball State, so that'd be a different liquor. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks for listening, guys. Thanks, Jimmy. It's a pleasure. It's good to see you guys. Great too, stuff. Man. Sunday's a day for my name. Doesn't look like I remember her And I